Assalamu alaikum. Ramatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon everyone who's watching. My name is Kenny Bomber. This is Consider This TV, where truth is made clear from falsehood. And I do bear witness there's no God other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his final servant and the seal of all prophets. So listen, this, this is part two of a Reasons to Revert segment. With, we had uh, Sister Super Sophia. She came on. Sister Sophia came on and uh, she gave us her, her revert story uh, a few days ago. Uh, going from Hinduism to uh, some Catholic influence and then inevitably um, to Islam uh, after initially being exposed to uh, hearing uh, uh, um, the Kalama first recited at the age of seven. So I, and so she remembered it this whole time, alhamdulillah. So I'm going to bring them on here in a second, but I just want to make sure everyone uh, um, is aware of the projects that we have going on right now, the Quran Initiative, the water well campaign, and the hygiene for the homeless kits that we're trying to put together. So we need donations, and we're we're a bit behind on that, and so we're trying to we're trying to get that together. So if you'd like to donate to the show, support support the Dawa efforts that we're doing, and uh, donate to these campaigns, you can do so by uh, clicking on either the GoFundMe link or the PayPal link that is in the chat right now. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and share. Please share this with other people, and um, may Allah bless you for your efforts and your intentions. Be sure to. Pray for people that are struggling in the world, by the way. There's, uh, everyone's going through different tests and trials, and so we need to remember those people. So let's bring on the sister and her husband, and we're going to hear his, his, his side of the story. Um, and so let's bring the, the brother and the sister on. So assalamu alaikum, brother Arib, and well, assalamu yeah. alaikum to uh, Super Sophia. <laughs> assalamu alaikum to both of you. So thank thank both of you for, for coming. Uh, and... Um, Alhamdulillah. So it was probably the, like I told the sister, it was the most entertaining, not probably, it's the most entertaining, <laughs> entertaining reasons revert segment that I've done. Not that I haven't enjoyed everyone else's story. Obviously, they're all very important, uh, but it was very entertaining because the sister truly believed that all Muslims were, were terrorists. And now here, here she is. She is a Muslim. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. uh, Alhamdulillah. So I've given a little bit of background. Um uh, so, but we're going to hear today. We're going to hear uh, the, the brother's uh, perception of how everything went, and uh, give his his side of the story, and take it from there. So, I'm looking forward to hearing what the brother has to say. And uh, brother, thank you once again for coming. Alhamdulillah, yeah. and both of them, for that matter. Before I go any further, I do want to mention that that uh, Sister Sophia has her own YouTube channel. It's Super Sophia Islamic, and make sure that you. Um, check that out. I'll try to post the link. I, I, I don't remember if I did it in the last show or not, but I'll I'll look it up uh, as we're speaking, and I'll post it in the chat for the sister's channel so you can uh, subscribe to her channel as well, inshallah. Okay, so brother, let, let me get, let me let me just summarize once again for the people who aren't aware of this story. And I do encourage you if you haven't heard the sister's uh, uh, revert story, you can go to the to the YouTube YouTube channel, go to the channel itself, and you can look up uh, uh, the reasons to revert segment for Sister Sophia. And let me see if we still have the banner that I can just show that way people know what they're looking for. Uh, yes, I do. Okay, so this is what it looks like. You know, reasons to revert, special guest Sophia Reed. And uh, check that out. So, we're, But we're going to give you just the basics and before we get to the brother. And... Um, just, so just in summary, so the sister heard uh, the Kalama at the age of seven. She remembered it from that point on. Alhamdulillah, that's beautiful. And also she had, so she grew up in a Hindu home and eventually had some Catholic uh, um, interactions with the Catholic faith. Not that she was Catholic, but she went to a Catholic school. And then uh, eventually she accepted Islam. Uh, and she met her husband at Starbucks, right? It was Starbucks. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> sister, once again, tell me, what did you ask him when you first met him? Um, I asked him if he'd ever hold a gun before because I could just imagine him like, ho like being with a group of guys just holding a gun. Because <laughs> <laughs> you thought you thought all Muslims were terrorists at that point. Okay, yeah, so exactly. brother, so brother Arib, mm -hmm. so what did what did you? From the very beginning, you you tell you tell from that point on in, in your own words and tell me how it went. 
Inshallah. Well, basically, you know, I was I was actually working in Starbucks at the time, and this was the Starbucks that was in the city center, so it was the busy Starbucks. Whereas when I actually started working for Starbucks, I was working in Oops. a local shop where they wouldn't have many customers. You know, it's a quiet place. So I asked them, I want to go full time. So I don't want to do part time anymore. I want to go full time. They said, All right, okay, we're going to send you into the town center. So I rem as far as I remember on that day, I was actually cleaning the windows. So as I'm cleaning the window, here comes Sophia. And she's walking in, and I open the door for her. And I think that that was it. And mm -hmm. straight as I opened the door, you know, she, we said hi. And she walked in. And at, at the time, I was the only Asian guy working in that Starbucks. So you look around, they're all white. And, yeah. you know, um, I just remember when, when, we, when we got to talking, I made her drink. We sat down. You know, I was on my break. So I, I could sit down in the cafe and just have my brew. So I yeah. sat down. And we start talking, you know, she asked me some questions and it, it was a few questions. And I remember in, in that, you know, she mentioned about, um, you know, about the guns and the weapons. And, you know, I, I could tell in her mind what was going on. You know, she's been looking at them, uh, them jihadi posters where they all have a gun. Allah <laughs> Akbar and, 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 and To be honest, I, I didn't blame her. I didn't blame her. What I liked about Sophia was um, her honesty. You know, she was honest. You know, she didn't. Yeah. She didn't. She didn't try to like. You know, like sugarcoat anything. She just said it as she felt. Yeah. And you know, think, you know, in my mind, I was thinking, okay, what's going on? What, what do I say? You know, what's the reply to that? You know, and I just simply said, you know, this is just, you know, it is propaganda. And yeah, absolutely. When you're young, in mind, and when you're young, you believe anything. You you yeah. tell a kid something that's not true. You tell him the sky's pink on a Sunday. They will wake up on a Sunday to check if it is it pink. <laughs> because that's, yeah, that's yeah. how the mind works. They believe anything they tell them. I think that, that's that's where it actually, you know, started for her. Where you know she's been given all this information, falsehood, and you know about Islam and you know about Muslims as a whole, which is still happening till this day. You know, people say all sorts about Muslims and Islam, but you know. So at the time, I think I was wise enough to understand that you know this is not something that um, you know it's not her fault. Yeah, this is something yeah. that the media, you know, portrays about Muslims, and till this day they do. Yeah, absolutely. So, brother, when she first walked in the door, are you saying it was like a, a love at first sight type of thing? For me, for me, yeah, I'd say for yeah, me. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. that's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. So, so how did? Let me ask you this. So, in in the course of that conversation, how did Islam first come up? Because obviously, she didn't walk in with a hijab, so she just walked no, no. in, you know, however she was dressed. So how did how did religion come into the conversation? Did sister, did you just presume that he was Muslim just because of his, uh, you know, just ethnicity, or or how did how um, did religion come up? It was just a fact where I asked him where he was from, and he said it was Pakistan, and oh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I just assumed that he, he he's a Muslim. So mm -hmm. yeah, it went from there. So okay, so when it, when you ask him where he where he's from and so forth, he tells you Pakistan. How, yeah. Still, but still, how did how did religion itself? You know, come into the conversation. Other than that, how, do you remember how it, how it was brought up? Um. So I I remember I just went, "Are you from Pakistan?" So I assumed that you must be a Muslim. So I just said that, and he and went, the, "Yeah, yeah, I'm a Muslim." So okay, then, okay, yeah. And then it went to the gun question. Yeah. Maybe. So I went. So have you ever <laughs> held a gun before? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so brother, brother, what did you think about this question that she asked you? I mean, at the time, like I said, I mean, I knew about propaganda and, you know, yeah. like, you know, what, you know, the media and everything. And so to be honest, I didn't really blame her for asking that question. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, that is another way of coming into Islam. You come yeah. up with the negative, you know, the prophet, you know, the, some, some people, you know, they ask you about the prophets and the wives and, the, you know, they're trying to get you, they're trying to get you, basically. Yeah. You know, now you're stuck. But then you give them an answer yeah. and they go home and they think about it, think about it, think about it. And eventually what happens is this is how you build interest. You know, these, when they're doing this propaganda, you know, yeah. and Allah, so many non-Muslims have said Allah, you know, because of yeah. what, what they're trying to say, you know, Absolutely. but they, the only thing was they didn't know what the meaning of what they were saying. Right, that's right. And, you know, it's, and it's beautiful actually, because Allah says in the Quran that Allah, that man plans and Allah plans and Allah is the yeah. best of planners. So, yeah. so this this whole curiosity, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Islam will enter every household before the Day of Judgment, every household. Yeah. And so, whether or not you accept Islam as your religion or not, 
Uh, that's that's a different ball game. But the the fact that it's that's being discussed so often is um, is is a for one, it's a great mercy from Allah that that all these people are becoming uh, or being exposed to Islam, even if even mm -hmm. if it's from a negative view, because some of these people are decent enough to 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 realize, you know what. Uh, I can't just accept what the media is telling me for myself. Or, you know, just just go go with what the media is saying. Um, you know, let, let me let me look into this for myself and, and base my opinion on that. And um, mm -hmm. you know, that whole propaganda thing. I mean, that's the whole reason that I wrote the book, "Consider Islam Disproving the Patriots of Propaganda," and I wrote it yeah. as a, de a defense of is uh, uh, for Islam because uh, I know what Islam, <laughs> you know what it what it really teaches, and um, you know, so it's. It's part of our obligation as Muslims that, you know, it, it means that because, you know, like the sister was watching you and, you know, she when she found out, she realized that you was Muslim. Um, now she's going to chat everything that you're doing. You know, she's listening to what you say <laughs> you know, and so forth. So it puts the focus on you when you're a Muslim. And yeah. that's our opportunity. That's Dawa, you know, our opportunity to do Dawa just simply by how we carry ourselves and yeah. not, you know, um, you know, not to, you know, just be conscious of, of what you're saying and what you're doing and realize that you are an ambassador of Islam and yeah. that, that all eyes are on you. And uh, yeah. that's it's actually a great mercy from Allah if we're if we're wise enough to keep that on, on our minds and and do what we're supposed to do and just, you know, live in the obedience of Allah and follow the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as our example. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's beautiful. So. Uh, about how long did that that conversation in the Starbucks? How, about how long did it take? I know you was on break, so yeah, maybe twenty minutes. I think twenty, 20 minutes. Twenty five minutes. Twenty minutes. Yeah. But apparently, b both of you had a uh, um, had had an impact on one another. Obviously, it sounds like you exchanged yeah, each yeah. other's information. And so, how I mean, how? I, go ahead. I think after the first um, time we actually met, there wasn't you know. There wasn't much, you know, like we didn't think we'd ever meet again, first okay. of all, you know. This was it, you know, this is the finish of the start. But, yeah. you know, it, it's like when, when Allah plans, like you say, you know, it's you 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 don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, yeah. or, or what, what's happened in the past. I, I didn't plan anything, you know. Yeah. This is how it's been. But as things happen, you you realize, and I think, you know, if, if we got everything we wanted in life, every single thing in life that we wanted, we probably wouldn't believe in God. We'd That's say, right. you know, you know, there, there's something, because if we had a choice, you know, you know, um, we, we probably would destroy ourselves and not even realize. Well, sure we would. Absolutely. That's right. We'd have no, no, no use. We, you know, we'd get everything that we wanted and we'd, there'd be yeah. no reason to pray. And, uh, and that's, you know, I try to remind people that's why we're tested and that's why we go through difficulties. Um, you know, and Allah tells us, we'll be sure we'll test you with fear and hunger and the loss of lives and property and the fruits of your, your labor. But we give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere, who say, when affected with hardship and calamity, So the purpose is that we're tested with these hardships and these difficulties and with, and with ease, as a matter of fact. But for yeah. some people, unfortunately, unless they're tested with the difficulty and they're just broken, that, broken down either physically or financially, mentally, emotionally, it takes some people to truly be broken down in order for them to cry out to Allah. And, um, yeah. but that's a, that's a, that's a mercy from Allah as well, because yeah. once again, like you said, brother, and that's absolutely true that if we won't, if we didn't go through these tests and these difficulties, then uh, people would just, you know, they're getting yeah. everything they want. And so there's no, no need to pray. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've seen, you know, like, whereas, you know, many Muslims, what they do is, you know, if, if they realize someone's not a Muslim, or, or the problem that I've seen, you know, like, uh, especially when I was working and, you know, in Starbucks and around and I was looking at other Asians, you know, other Muslims, Pakistani Muslims, how they act. They, you know, like we have like, we're Muslims. We we are different in what we do. You know, we don't drink. We don't, you know, do certain, certain things. Whereas what I realized with, with most people is what they try to do is they try to go more on their side. So, yeah. for example, you know, oh well, yeah, it's acceptable. You know, this is acceptable. It's okay to drink, but I don't do it. So, so to make them feel good, yeah. whereas you know, what we're supposed to be doing is not making them feel good. We're meant to be speaking the truth. 
We're meant to yeah. be telling them the truth. You know, no matter how harsh it is, but that is not the case in today's you know society. Everyone wants to fit in with the other person, even if they're wrong. Yeah, you know, even yeah. if they're wrong, and, and you completely disagree with it, you're like, no, it's okay. That's why we have Muslims who drink today, who take yeah. drugs. You know, all these things. Why are they happening? Because slowly, slowly, the devil he he's, he he plants his seeds. It's okay. You know, he's not bothering you. He's drinking. He's not bothering you. And then yeah. before you know it, you know, your children end up drinking, or you yeah. know, they're on drugs, and you think. How did that happen? But then you look back at life and you remember, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you, you begin to compromise, and, and that's the shaitan coming and making you want to compromise. You know, that, that's interesting yeah. you mentioned that because uh, there was a sister that was supposed to come on, another sister that was supposed to come on uh, this week for Reasons to Revert segment, and she's actually a sister that's here in Texas and oh. uh, uh, where I live. I live in Houston. She lives in Austin. But... Uh, so I'm not backbiting the sister. No one knows who she is, but I'm using this as an example. And it's because it's, it, it's very important. It's very important. And so the sister, um, she said that she's been a Muslim for 11 years. But what I noticed when I looked in her profile, you know, she, she actually contacted me after seeing sister Sophia's reasons of revert segment, matter of fact. And so she contacted me after that. She said that she'd like to share her story. And I said, great, okay, so let's, uh, you know, we'll find a, a date and time and make it happen. And so I already made the ad for the show and so forth. And uh, I think I advertised it during one show and um, at some point. And so, um, but what I noticed is that when I looked on her profile, I seen many uh, posts with memes with verses from the Bible. And mm. I was like, okay, well, Initially, it made me question, you know, doing this, we know that with, with the propaganda and so, and so forth, some of, some of the propaganda is people posing as, as Muslims either or they're posing to, as if they're ex-Muslims, when in fact, as many of these people have been proven, they were never Muslim to begin with. But, yeah. but, but when I've seen these posts about with all these Bible verses, you know, she says that she likes to build bridges for interfaith and so forth. That's fantastic. Get them to bridge, you know, build build bridges of understanding and so forth. That's great. Uh, but, but she wanted to, she didn't want to use her her full name. She she wanted to use a a fake name, and also she wanted to make sure that uh, um, you know uh, there was no links to her profile and things of that nature. Okay, that's great. But it 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 seemed that she was. It made me question what her intentions were. To be honest, I couldn't can't help but mm. question that. And and um, but it seemed that she was she was compromising in that I didn't see any post about the Quran or anything Muslim. No, it's nothing. No Islamic memes. Nothing. But I've seen many many Bible uh, uh, yeah. you know verses that were posted and. And if she's truly a Muslim, which she, you know, I have no clue, but if she's truly a Muslim, that means that, and she was a Caucasian lady, and, but that means that she's allowing the pressures of other people to deny speaking yeah. the truth. And I told her sister in a private conversation, I asked her, you know, uh, I noticed that you post these Bible verses. And she said, yes, because she, she believes the Bible. And I said, in what, what aspect of the Bible do you believe? I said, because as Muslims, we have to make sure that we don't compromise the truth just in order to appease people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's that's a form of shirk. So yeah. Yeah. if you're posting these Bible verses because you want your Christian friends to approve of you, and they don't, matter of fact, after 11 years, they don't even know you're a Muslim, then you're this is, this is shirk. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no other way to put it. I didn't tell her that, but I was just trying to, you know, break it to her in a, the wisest way that I could, that this is not... This is dangerous because, you know, it's it, it's not about it's not about uh, uh, speaking out, out against someone someone's religion or their beliefs and so forth. Uh, um, you know, Allah does tell us in the Quran to invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and kind words and argue with them in ways that are best and most gracious. So we're going to debate. We're going to you know we're going to we're going to go back and forth, but uh, we're actually attacking falsehood. We're, so we have to stand on the truth, like you had mentioned. And uh, so I just wanted to mention that real quick, because uh, for everyone listening, if you're Muslim, we should not be ashamed of your Muslim ident identity. Uh, 
This is a great gift from Allah that you have been chosen to be a Muslim. And that doesn't mean other people haven't been uh, exposed to the truth of Islam, but they have to, you know, their hearts and their minds have to be open to it. And, yeah. you know, if it's not, then Allah says that in the Quran that he will, you know, the, their, those people, their hearts and their minds are sealed, meaning that there's no there's no compulsion in religion. Not even Allah is going to force these people to do anything. It's, we're, we're, we have a freedom of choice in this life. But as Muslims, we have to be, you know, be proud of your Muslim identity and don't don't yeah. just back into the shadows because of all the propaganda, the Islamophobia in the world. No, you are an yeah. ambassador of Islam and you're a representative. And therefore, you know, you set an example by keeping a smile on your face, giving to charity, you know, uh, opening the door like you did for the sister. Now she's a, your Muslim wife. Alhamdulillah. Uh, you know, that's that's the type of things that it takes. So I don't mean to get, get off track. I want to hear your, your story, but I. Can't help but uh, but share that uh, share that bit of information there. So mm -hmm. alhamdulillah. So what? Wh so where did it go from? Go ahead, brother. I think uh, did we lose your mic again? Yeah, was you trying to say something? On to what you just said. Okay. Sure, I remember when, and I was in primary school. That's the primary school is basically here. We have primary school and high school, mm -hmm. and then it's college, and then it's you know. Um, so basically, when I was in primary school, I remember it was Ramadan, and I was about maybe seven years old, and you know we're not allowed to when it's Ramadan. And we're fasting. We're not allowed to listen to music, right? Yeah. We're not. We're not meant to listen to music in the first place. But if yeah. it's Ramadan, especially, we're not allowed to, you know, be listening to piano sessions and stuff. Why, why not? So many teachers, many Muslim teachers. They found about three, four Muslim teachers who said, "Yeah, you know, we're not allowed." So you know, get them to do something else. And then there was this one teacher, one, who said, "No, of course they're allowed." Who said they're not? So, so, so because of that one person who stood up and said, "You know what? No, 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 they're allowed." And she was, she said in so confidence, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, they're allowed to listen to music in Ramadan and whatnot. So because of that one person, we had to go and listen and do this music class. Mm. And, yeah. and this is politics today. They yeah. find that one person who's ready to say, no, this is wrong. This is not wrong. You know, um, where, where does he say that? Oh, he's going to argue against the Quran. And they'll be like, okay, this is our front man. Everyone yeah. else go away. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah, that's that's people becoming uh, westernized in that, um, you know, uh, giving into the pressures. As a matter of fact, in Surah Maida of the Quran, uh, it talks about these types of people that are amongst the Muslims. But uh, I believe it's uh, 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 Ayah forty-two or forty-three in there, somewhere in there, thirty-six to forty uh, through seventy-three or something like that. I can't remember exactly right now off of the top of my mind, but it's Surah Maida for sure. Uh, but it's talking about the period where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims were trying to go on, on the, uh, 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 um, they were trying to go to Mecca for the Hajj, and mm -hmm. the, the Meccans wouldn't let them in. So a lot of the Muslims felt they were defeated; they couldn't go to the Hajj because they they wouldn't they weren't allowed in. And so then uh, uh, some of the people, because of the pressures of the non-Muslims, they were they were considering leaving the Muslim ranks. You know they were yeah. considering leaving the leaving Islam because all the pressures of the pagans and the Jews and uh, some of the Christians as well, for that matter. And uh, so the, then verses are revealed about warning people against doing that. And so these verses that the, like the sister, the Muslim sister that I was talking about, I mean, that's between her and Allah. But uh, you know, but um, when you begin to compromise, you're placing yourself in a very dangerous situation because you know now you're, you're you're compromising with people and you see them doing wrong and you're saying oh it's okay you know this is not bothering me but then the shaitan come like you mentioned and now you're more prone to start doing it because you've already given in this much so now you're going to give in this much and then now what now you're all you're completely buried in it uh you buried yourself yeah. in in uh wrongdoing and so forth so it's very dangerous very you got to be on the lookout for that not uh you know, we got to follow the hawk and, and make sure that, you know, we are on the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, realizing that the shaitan are coming and they're trying to steer steer us off course. And sometimes those shaitan are other human beings coming and uh, trying to, you know, uh, trying to lure us into different things. So from from the, the conversation at the, the coffee shop for 20 minutes, to, brother, from your standpoint, where did it go from there? What, what was on your mind after that? And uh, how did it go? Where did it go from there? I know you both of to you changed you. your Facebook information or whatever. So how how did it pick up from there? 
Mm-hmm. Um, basically, what I would, what was happening was I finished work, I went home, and just thought came in my mind. You know, just you know, it's it, it all go, it, it all works for Allah. You know, that, mm-hmm. and that's proven. You know, uh, so I'm at home just thinking. You know, you know, we, we had. You know, she was saying about you know Muslims and whatnot, and you know, I, I I could see you know where she was coming from. And I was like, you know, in my mind, I was thinking, you know, this this I need to you know somehow somewhere. You know, give her a Quran or something, you know, so she can realize, you know, what Muslims actually are, what, what Islam is, you know, the real Islam. I, you know, I wasn't interested if she would become a Muslim or not, you know, it was more like, you know, that she knows the truth, you know, what Islam actually is, rather than having that in, in her mind forever. So yeah. I went home and I remember, you know, finding her on Facebook. So I found her on Facebook. I, I added her, sent messaging her, no replies, nothing. Um, I went to sleep and, you know, I'm just, uh, it, it's, when you get a message so phone goes off I, I have a look and then oh there she is it's Safi and she's replying she's like she said something like how are you you okay and, and I went yeah I'm fine and then you know we, we, we continued slowly you know and yeah. she, she told me more about herself and you know and you know why she thought what she thought and the parent side of things and you know now I understand where she was coming from you know after so many years because I have realized that racism starts at home it, yeah, it, it does start at home. Yep. You have six kids, six year old kids who will tell you the same thing. You know, Muslims are terrorists. Where did they learn it from? Yes. That's right, brother. It's mom, dad, grandma. Because while they're having their conversations about Muslims, these kids can listen, they can hear it. So That's as they right. grow up, it's, it's stuck there. They don't understand what they're saying, but no. they're saying it because they're. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. And, you know, and that is the problem, you know, with, with racism. I feel like it's always it's always beginning at home. Absolutely, absolutely. There's no question about that. Uh, you know, it's, kids are influenced by their parents who they love and they trust. They're their, they're their first educators when it boils down to it, obviously. And, and then, yeah, yeah. On and, top of that, you've got you've got these games. You know, these war games. Yeah. These Call of Duty and whatnot. And if you if you if you go into the games. You know who are they attacking? Yeah, you, you, you guys who who they shooting? Muslims. Just look yeah. carefully. They, they're Muslims. And what's yeah. happening in real life in Syria? Who who's dying? Muslims. Muslim yeah. blood is the cheapest blood in the world today. Yeah. Nobody cares. Things happening in Syria in Palestine. Nobody cares. It's not even on the news. Yeah. You see it yeah. on some you know random news feed that you know that's not very popular. You know that someone's just you know, privately started, but on the main news, no, no, there's no mention. Right, that's right. And the fact it's a fact that uh, there's more Muslims killed by terrorists than any other group of people. More Muslims die at the hands of terrorists than any other people, and so. But but yeah. are considered us. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's propaganda it's, at the finest. At, at its finest. Absolutely. You know. You know. You have people who go from America, England. They go to Pakistan, places like Pakistan. And they're like, wow, the people are so nice and, you know, they're giving us free stuff and they're looking after us. And, you know, we thought something else before we came. Yeah. And that's exactly what's going on. This, you know, this programming has started since the TV has been invented. Before people didn't think like that, the world wasn't in the state it is today before the technologies. You know, this technology was built for all this, what's happening today, for the wars, you know, for, for everything that's actually happening the corruption and the politics and it works it does work while people are busy you know um watching whatever they're watching you know th- these politicians are doing serious stuff in the in, in, other, in other countries and and, and no, nobody knows about it because why you should be worried about the new game that's coming out you should be worried about the movie the netflix the everything else keep yourself busy and yeah. while we're destroying that's, you know, right. Was, that's uh, right an article yeah. about, um, the sea and how you know the fish of the sea you know, have decreased by so much, you know, because of overfishing and certain, you know, certain things. But who would have known that? Which normal person would know that? They, we, yeah. we, we think, okay, yeah, plenty of fish. You know, there's plenty of this and that. Unless you educate people about, you know, what's happening even in the consumer world. We're consuming, consuming, consuming. You know, if you if you went 40 years from back from today, you know, 50 years back, you look at life then, people didn't buy as many things as they buy today. That's right. And then they were 
why you know money is a problem why you know the you know they can't pay the bills and whatnot and you, but where's that money being spent who taught you to spend who taught you to buy adverts yeah. tv you know you look at your, your favorite celebrities and these, these guys are promoting you to buy a t-shirt you know you could buy a t-shirt that's a 10 pounds because it's got someone's name on it you're going to pay a thousand pounds yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they've got your mind they're controlling it and you don't even realize yeah, there's there's a book that I read uh, uh, when I was a teenager, titled the the theories of Yakub, and it's talking about mm -hmm. population control and how you know the people of power uh, use religion and they use their you know their influence, propaganda, and so forth in order to control masses of people, uh, in, yeah. so that they can achieve their agendas. So they they're preoccupying the human being with the things that you just mentioned, and then also on top of that, now the human being is worried about paying the bill because they've been spending too much money on, on uh, uh, the merchandise that you mentioned, trying to live up to society's standards. And now they're worrying about paying the bills and I've got to work more. And now you're just preoccupied. And so you're not watching the, th the things and you're not, you're not studying your religion. Sometimes you're not even practicing your religion and you're, you're just being really manhandled by, by the media like you're you're like your animals like a bunch of cattle being being hurled you know into one pen after another and so forth and you're just you're just uh, consumed by it and you don't even realize yeah. and so therefore you begin yeah. to I'm, accept I'm, things I'm, by tradition I'm, and so forth without without even ever acknowledging it and it starts once again it starts in the home because it's in the home that people have the television on too much and they're allowing the children to play the play the games and uh you know and all the influence that uh, that, that we have in the world. So absolutely. No, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. Yeah. So when, when, you, when she contacted you on Facebook, um, you started trying to break down some information to her. So how long did the, did the online interaction take place? I know the sister said that she was, she would travel uh, for six months mm -hmm. out of the year and go to different places. So, so how long was there a time when, when the communication had stopped for a period? And we spoke for, um, we spoke for, I think we met in 2013 and then we got married in 2015. So mm -hmm. until from 2013 until 2015, we were just trying to get to know each other. I was trying to get to know his religion and more about Islam and stuff, because obviously it was just it was just a point where I just believed that everyone was bad <laughs> as Muslims. So that that just would not come out of my head. It was just there. And I was I was just not ready to believe anything. So. Yeah, it was it was just that two year space, I think. Um, and we continued meeting and stuff in the mid on the, in the middle as well, because obviously I was going to college. Um, so I kept in getting in contact with him, and if I had any questions, and I'd ask like, "What does this mean? What does that mean?" And you know, because I'd I'd read the Quran at the um college as well. So when I'd have spare time, I like breaks and stuff where I've where I've got a a lesson spare I can just sit down and read the Quran and I'd be like right I'm referencing this and I'm thinking right what does this mean and what does that mean and then he'd explain it to me so yeah I think it went on for two years and then we ended up getting married wow that's beautiful all, all the dawa and the, you know the brother initially after that first meeting thinking you know I need to see if I can get the sister a Quran you know and, and having that desire to to because he knew, because he, he knew, based on the question you asked him, has he ever shot a gun? <laughs> and I'm like, um, he knew that that the way you thought was, you was being, like he said, you was being very honest, that you truly believed this. And so yeah. it weighed heavy on him. So it, it was, it's great that he took the time to, uh, you know, uh, to, you know, The thing is that I'd always tried to speak to Muslims and stuff as well, but then, um, whenever my dad would drop me off to the college because it, it wasn't a fact where my parents would let me travel alone so my dad or my mom would always drop me off to college so every time before I'd go to school or college or wherever um, I was always told like literally two minutes away from the car stopping make sure you don't speak to any Muslim people really? because yeah Whoa, I was, wow. it was just like that and literally it came to a point where I had um, Muslim teachers as well, and, and it, there was just no respect. Like, I'd just look at them, and I, I wouldn't look at them as humans, like, as if you're meant to look at them. And it was it was just purely because 
I was taught that and now that I realize and I'm thinking it was so wrong. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's that's part of the propaganda is to dehumanize the, the, the so-called enemy and make yeah. these people seem animalistic to a point. Uh, and, and the use of propaganda, we see examples of this in during the World War II era. I mentioned that in the book Consider Islam, uh, that during the World War II era, uh, even Japanese Americans were made to, to, to be the enemy. Matter of fact, there's a, a, a the gentleman who played Doctor uh, Mr. Sulu on on the uh, Star Trek series, the first original TV series. Uh, he he him and his family were part of those people that were rounded up in America and put in uh, internment camps, put in, put in camps. They were around Japanese Americans during world war two were putting, put in camps and wow. it was all centered around these posters called uh, matter of fact, if you're watching right now, you can Google it and you'll see examples of it. They're called, this is the enemy posters. And so these were, wow. this was before the internet, obviously. So these posters went out like crazy thousands and thousands of these posters went out. And what it, what they depicted is images of the of the Japanese soldier, uh, supposed to be, but his but the faces were turned like a monkey, made him oh, look like, like a monkey. So in the minds of the people, these people are just animals, right? Yeah. And so, like the brother mentioned in the games that you see, uh, it's always the, the Muslims being portrayed as the enemy. There was yeah. also a study that I mentioned. I can't remember the gentleman's name right now because it's been too too long. But there was a gentleman who did a study over a period of years for, uh, of, of 980 movies. And in all these 980 movies, the, the people of, uh, um, of Middle Eastern appearance and so forth, or Muslims and so forth, they were, all, they, they were always evil. And, and so yeah. in a lot of ways, they, they, yeah, they make the facial features with a big nose and a big, a big sword. And, you know, so this is all propaganda. People just... Just fall right right into it head first, um, and um, you know it's it's very unfortunate, sister. When you were in the college and dealing with these Muslim teachers, uh, were they decent people? Or when when you look back, were they did they do anything that was? That no, was, they were they yeah. were really really nice. Bless them. But it was yeah. just me. I think I was just wrong at that time because obviously it was what I was taught. Um, and obviously they, they are some, uh, like I said previously in, in the other show, that there's there's goods and bads in every religion, in every con in every colour, every race. So it's not something that people should just pick out and say, right, it's Muslims that are terrorists or, you know, whites or blacks or pinks or whatever you are. It's just you're still human. And, and I think everyone deserves to be respected. Um, and I believe that, yeah, they are some fake Muslims that, you know, um, that are born Muslims and don't believe Islam to that level where they'd, where they'd um, uh, kind of cuss the words of the Quran down, they'd uh, disagree with the Hadith. And there's also people that are reverts as well that just come into Islam just to study it in order to, you know, pick on it later on and, and you do wrong things with it. And that's not what religion is for. Yeah. It's to actually you know, spread knowledge, spread the truth. And I guess it's, as long as people are doing that, then you're spreading that good intention to other cultures, other communities, other religions, and, and you're making yourself better as well. Absolutely. And Allah does say in the Quran that, you know, uh, I can't remember the exact verses right now, but for the people who, who aren't following the, the you know, uh, following the, the religion properly, that Allah will replace those people with, with other people that yeah. will do it. That will do it, and so if if you're, and, and that's you know that's part partly why the these reasons to revert segments are so important because, for one, there's other non-Muslims right now as we're speaking that have these same you know some of them think that Muslims are terrorists and so forth. If they're not terrorists now, they're going to wind up being terrorists. Some people are literally thinking this right now as we speak. We know this, and so it's a good it's good to. Uh, um, uh, to hear these stories from people such as yourself and people such as uh, the brother named Richard McKinney, who planned to go into a masjid and bomb the masjid. And now he's, wow. he, then he wound up becoming yeah. the president of that masjid. He's been on wow. the show two or three times. He's a friend of mine. Um, I've met him. I met, initially I met him online, but we've met in person and so forth at this point. So I didn't grow up with him or anything like that, but uh, we, he is my Muslim brother. And obviously he's a, a friend of mine as well. But, uh, there's people out there that truly think this way, and 
so these revert stories are important for those people that are that are Islamophobes right now as we speak, but also it's good for the people who are born into Islam to hear these stories and say, because it, it, it inspires them to, to say, you know what, these, these people who weren't born as Muslims, they were born to be Hindus or uh, Christians or whatever. Now they're coming and they just accepted Islam on their own. Why did they do this? And so it causes some of them to, to, uh, to try to practice their deen even, you know, in, Maybe they're not practicing at all. Maybe you know, but it it influences these people. That's really these stories are so important, and yeah. uh, so I pray that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blesses everyone who comes and and gives their their story and so forth, and is not ashamed to to reveal their Muslim identity and 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 make it known that despite being you know um, growing up in a Hindu family or a Christian family or a Buddhist family or whatever that you was. was strong enough within yourself to say you know what let me look at this for my own and let me see what the truth is uh, and it's not always going to be easy um, no. for reverts it's not always going to be re easy because don't think that if you're going to revert then people are going to accept you straight away no. it's, it's sometimes that people are not going to it's not going to happen because it's happened to me where i've been rejected where i've been refused and it's, it's happened amongst my own family members it's happened amongst friends so don't think that it's an easy path, but just remember who you're doing it for because you're not doing it for people. You're doing it for yourself and you're here after and your creator because that's what who your connection should be with. It shouldn't be with anyone else. So you shouldn't think that, oh, if I, if I accept Islam, am I hurting someone or am I, you know, misguiding someone? Or just think it's right and I'm doing it for, for my own rights so I can have a better year after. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. No question about it. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So where did it, where did it go from there from the online discussions? And so let's pick it up from uh, just the, 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 um, uh, so, well, let me ask you this. So, so in the center market or wherever you referred to it as, I don't remember. So did, did both of you already, y'all lived in that area? Is that, uh, did y'all actually live in the same area, but the sister was traveling? So we have different postcodes, um, and he lived he lived more of the posh side of the city um, okay. because I moved to it's Leeds, West Yorkshire. So I originally grew up in Bradford, West Yorkshire. So then I moved to Leeds when I was about four years old because my parents then owned a shop. Um, but then, yeah, we didn't know each other until um, obviously I started college, and I think it was around six weeks into college and then I've met him um but we, w we wasn't living that far so it would be around it would be about 20 to 25 minutes to actually go to okay. see him where he would live okay okay and so so what so after after you you met at the at the uh, coffee shop you know met on you know started communicating on Facebook so let's let's pick it up from there and just wherever we, wherever we left off on the story and uh, pick it up from there and how, how things progress, inshallah. Do you want to see it or shall I say it? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's hear Reeb say it. Let, let him explain okay. it. So, you know, with Facebook, it was, you know, it was just questions, you know, she'd throw questions at me. And, or if I've got any information that I found out, you know, I'd, I'd send her something. And, you know, as time went on, as months were progressing, I was thinking, you know, I, you know, but this is before the marriage happened. And I was thinking in my mind, I was thinking, you know, I have never met someone this much interested in the topic of Islam. Never. Mm. You don't meet people who just, you know, six months in a row, you know, we're talking about the same thing. And, you know, you know, it's not even the fact that she was getting closer to Islam. I was getting closer to Islam. There were certain things that I didn't even know that I, I found out later on. So there were so oh. many things that I was Oh, really? Is that based, oh, on, really? based on questions that she presented to you and then you had to look the information up, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes. that's so I'll, but I don't think I told her this. That, you know, I'm learning at the same time. I'll just give her the answer and explain it to her the best I could. And, you know, it would make sense. It's a, you know, and, and that's how it was. You know, I was finding out more as well. And it was getting me more interested in the topic. Because even though, you know, I was born a Muslim, we, we, we wasn't practicing. You know, yeah. we, we knew the foundations of everything, you know, when it would be, you know, uh, when we were fasting, we'd fast, you know, sometimes we wouldn't, you know, we wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wouldn't say, you know, my family was uh, exactly fully five times namaz and, you know, everything. No, there wasn't, you know, there was, they were more like, you know, half and half, 
Meaning, yeah. you know, it depends which day it is. And, uh, yeah. you know, so, so when I start researching and I remember, you know, the first, when you learn something new and you start praying and, you know, you, you start going through the right path. And I remember, you know, my, my parents, my aunties and my mother and, you know, my uncles, what's funny was when, when I wasn't in, on the Islamic route, no questions asked, you know, Arib's a good guy. Yeah, he's amazing. But straight as I start praying, what's wrong with him? Is he all right? Is everything all right? Is, is there something wrong with them? And, and this is how they respond. You yeah. know, so, 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 so for example, you, you go to teach them, you know, you, you know, you, you should pray, you know, this and that. Oh, come on, don't teach us. And, and, and that's how it was. And then what happened with me was, what I realized is, there's nothing that breaks your imam more than your own family. That's when right. When they say something negative, it's like, you know, it's like, um, it's like an arrow with a very sharp needle that hits in the heart. And yeah. I think, Happened to me a couple of times. It didn't happen to me once. You know, you know, I start praying and then I stop and then I start praying. And do you know what? I, what I realized my, that that was Allah's way of getting my heart to become stronger. And That's stronger right. And, stronger. and eventually, a day comes. You don't care. You don't care because yeah. you know it's you and your Lord. That's, That's right. It. Allah, what? Yeah. That's right. That's right, brother. Let me ask you. So, uh, when you started praying, were, were they assuming that uh, you said what's what's they was asking what's wrong with him? They were so they were assuming you were only praying because you were going through something at the time. Is that what they thought? They, yeah, I think that's that's what it yeah. was. I think okay. they were thinking, well, is, is he in trouble with something or you know yeah. what's going on? You know. <laughs> so, so so did so did they just blatantly try to discourage you from praying? Or, or they just. I think it was more the times where I, where I was given a bit of daba for them to, you know, you know, why did you start praying and, you know, and, and yeah. it's just, you know, it was but, just. I think that was something you don't do with your parents, you know, because they will yeah. give you an answer that will stick. And I think that that's all it was, you know. You can't, you can't change people. You yeah. can't change people how they think, or you know. But you, what you can do is, it's your actions that count. You know, mm-hmm. you're you're doing the right thing. You know, the other person doing the wrong thing, but. You just make the that you know one day it fits all together, and sometimes yeah, it does, sometimes it doesn't. But as long as you're, you know, all of us will go into our own graves at the end of the day. You know, it's like when the, on the day of judgment, a mother will say, He's not my son, a son that's will right. say, That's not my mother. And, and, and to be honest with you, and when you that much detail, you know, the, the Quran goes into that much detail about the day of judgment and what's going to happen, it, you know, just life in general. What if you read the Quran from the start to the finish? you'll have no doubt that this is the truth. No doubt Absolutely. whatsoever. If you Absolutely. truly read it with an open heart, you'll have no doubt. The whole world is fit into it. With That's the stars right. and universe, everything is fit into the book. And, and you'll understand everything. And you'll realize, you know, there's some people, you know, like, oh, you know, NASA did so much research and whatnot. And I go, listen, it's already in the Quran. Whatever we need to know is in the Quran. They've not, right. gone, they've not gone ahead of it. They're still there. They're still yeah. figuring out if it's a circle or if it's a triangle or what's going on. They're still in the basic stuff. And they're spending yeah. millions, uh, millions of dollars on, you know, these things. I remember, you know, the, um, when, uh, when you know, they tried to make a pen that would work while they're up there in the this, in this, in this, uh, satellite. So a pen that would work. So they spent, you know, two, three million pounds on pens, you know, that would actually work when they're up there. And then you, if you think this, why didn't you just use a pencil? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a pencil. Yeah. But no, because you know, it has to be a pen. It has to be because you see how limited we are in our thinking. Yeah. And then later on, once we've once we've you know tried and failed, and oh, oh, if if we pass, then we realize, oh no, you know this could have been done, you know, easily. And and yeah. and, and that just wants to show you know like like the Quran is perfect. You know, every everything is perfect. But what we do is. We doubt it within us. We read it. We think, oh, that's too difficult. You know, oh, that's too much. You know, this this is too much. But then where do you run? You know, one day, there's one guarantee in life, and that is death. Once you die, that is it. You know you're going to die, right? You know know for a fact you're going to die. Everyone dies one day. So then you should also know that what's going to happen after death is true as well. Because before you came on this earth, did someone tell you that the earth is going to be like this and it's going to be like that? No one told you. You just ended up here. So right. whatever information you're getting, you know, it's true. It, it, it's 100% true. And, it, and it's all about, you know, it's, it's like we can't see Allah. We haven't seen the Prophet. We believe in him, right? We believe in him. That is a level of Iman, you know. That is like a high level of Iman. Some people, they believe in the Prophet, they believe in Allah, but they have some kind of doubts in their hearts. 
you know, mm, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. And throughout the life that maybe, maybe carries on, carries on, carries on, carries on, carries on. And I wonder that, but the fact that they continue to pray, they continue to, you know, follow up on the sunnah, Allah will be like, that's fine. You know, the, to, Allah didn't create us to punish us, first of all. He no. didn't create us for no. punishment. You know, the, the, this world is a test. And That's right. the, the world is, you know, we we always, you know, it's it, it's um, the scientist uh, saying that seeing is believing. You know, everything that you see, you should believe. Everything yeah, else is yeah. you don't you don't see the air, right? Yeah. But you know it's there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, That's when, me when speaking inside world, him. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you look at the world, when, when you look at the world, it, it, it's sun shining, you know, it, it's the, the switch is on. And it's night, the switch is off. Who's yeah. turning the switch on and off? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the that, that is it. If you can figure that out in your mind, right, okay, you know, nothing happens automatically. There's always, you know, someone controlling something. That is it. You've understood it all. Allahu Akbar. And, you know, you know, yeah, you touched on some beautiful things, brother. May Allah bless you. And uh, the sister tried, the sister said some of it you got, you got from her. <laughs> So, yeah, so in regards to the dawah, you know, um, uh, you know, I always encourage people and, and try to remind people, we should all remind one another, as a matter of fact, that dawah begins with self, that you have to do dawah mm -hmm. with yourself. And that means that we have to seek knowledge and, and, and apply that knowledge. Whenever I pray, I always mention it on the show because I encourage people to pray the same thing in my dua, right? Oh, Allah, please increase me in, in wisdom, knowledge, and patience and help me to apply these things to my life, right? Increase me in these things. Help, you know, help me because I'm I'm fallible and keep me focused, you know, and, and so forth. And um, so it begins with self in regards to family members. Now, you know, if you're the person in the household that is going to the prayer, you know, the Prophet ﷺ himself, he used to go wake up every, wake up all his, his family, his wives and so forth to come to the prayer, right? And um, so it begins, it begins there. But the person initially, they have to be willing to do it themselves, even if no one else is doing it. You have to yeah. seek knowledge if no one else is doing it. Because like you both of you said, on the Day of Judgment, we're going to be standing alone before Allah. So yeah. Yeah. no one's going to be able to come to our rescue we're going to be judged for what we've done and what we have done alone. And it has nothing to do with the family members in, in directly rather. Uh, but, um, and then, so, so the dawah begins with self and then obviously you're close, your family. It yeah. begins in the home first. And so that's direct dawah day in, day out dawah, direct and indirect, because sometimes you don't have to say a word and you're doing dawah or you're doing the opposite for that matter. So you're doing dawah by, Every time the, the Adon is, goes off, it's time for you to go to the Salat, right? And you go yeah. pray even if no one else goes. You go. Yeah. And uh, you begin the foundation there and, and then ex and extends out from there. So we're constantly yeah. doing short-term and long-term Dawah, depending on how often you're around certain people and so forth. So you began doing Dawah just with the uh, – brother, when you, you was doing Dawah when you opened the door for the sister and let her come into the Starbucks. Being a gentleman, yeah. being a you know, being courteous yeah. and so forth to someone that you've never met before, and you know, not only they're a customer but they're a human being, and I'm sure that you would do the same thing, even if you weren't at work, you probably would have still opened the door for the sister yeah. and let her come on in. It's dawah. Yeah. Some people think that those types of things are just ah, whatever, and they don't think anything behind it. But those types of those acts and deeds are are important, and we're going to be rewarded on the day of judgment for those because that that begins the foundation. So now when the sister starts talking to you, she remembers, well, this is the guy who just opened the door for me. And, okay, that was nice. And then you start talking, and, and it proceeds from there. And then the, that desire to, do, to, to, uh, uh, to, to answer the sister's questions, and in the process, you're actually learning yourself. Ikra, bismira, bakela, kalak. And you begin to read, doing the very first thing that Allah commands us to do in the Quran, to read and seek knowledge. We're going to be held yeah. accountable for that knowledge on the Day of Judgment. Uh, and some people withhold that knowledge. There's a lot of traditional Muslims. They have a lot of knowledge about Islam, but they're not doing dawah. Yeah, but, yeah the, the thing is, they they feel like the world is, you know, never going to change. You know, yeah. everything's messed up. And, you know, what we know, let's just save ourselves and forget the rest. You know, yeah. that, that's their attitude towards when it comes to the, you know, other people. And basically what's, what's happened is with them, I think it's more like, 
there's not there's not many people who you know like you said there's many people who know a lot of things who have a yeah. lot of skills but it, it never comes to use it, it, it yeah. never ever comes to use because that's that's the shaitan you know actually stopping them from you know like for example if someone's a good singer if someone can sing and they're very good you know they won't stop talking about it they'll be like yeah you need to go to this music show you need to do this you need to do that because with haram look how easy it is to do haram yeah you know you just you open your window start swearing at everyone yeah. let's try doing dava open the window give dava <laughs> you know yeah. that, that's another thing <laughs> yeah but so, that's so how it is you know, it's easier. in today's world it's easier to to be sinful it's much more easier you know if you want to earn good money be a sinful person do you look at all these people who are doing sinful stuff worshiping the devil they've got all the money in the world you know you'll have yeah. someone who's 18 and he'll, and he'll have millions of pounds. 18, young, young lad, because, you know, you know, he doesn't have a religion. He doesn't care. You know, he'll mock anyone and any, everything. And this is supposed to be funny. And, you know, but like Allah says, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to come back to me and I will and yeah. I will judge you. So, yeah. yeah, you know, some people are given heaven on earth, but then there's a price to pay. There's a That's price. Right. You know, if you struggled, if you struggled throughout your life and, you know, things have not gone your way, that's a blessing. That's right. That is that is a blessing if you think about it. It's a blessing. That's right. Absolutely. But it's, it's about understanding these things. You know, it's about you know understanding life. You know, if you're if if what were you what you were five years ago, you're the same today. That means you've not learned nothing. No, five years absolutely. from you know you waste time. You That's should always, right. you know, try to learn something or maybe try to improve yourself a little bit or you know maybe you know make some a difference to other people's lives. But in, t in today's society, we're not taught that. We're taught it's about you. And so everyone's yeah. me, 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 me. And what's happening to the world, everyone has the same problem. And that, that sure sounds like the story of that sure sounds sounds like the story of Iblis in the in the in the in the Quran, in that yeah, yeah. you know, when man can't man, man was created, uh, you know, Iblis and his followers refused to bow down because it's it was all about him. Why should I bow yeah. down to him when I'm better than he is? Yeah. You know, why, why do I need to, you know, it's all about me, 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 me. Look at me, look at me, yeah, look at me. And it's the same with the know. politicians today. It's yeah. all about me, 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 me. You look at the politicians, one saying me, the other one saying me, the third one saying me. And you're thinking, okay, and then what happens is they have all these little parties and they're all fighting against each other. And, you know, all these riots. And who, who's, who's suffering? The regular yeah. person who sits in his TV and watches them, he's suffering. Whereas yeah. these politicians, they know what they're doing for, in advance. They have, you know, a 10-year backlog already written. So they know what was going to happen, you know, in 2030. They, they've already planned it all. And slowly, but slowly, but slowly. And that's how it's working. You know, this is how everything's coming together. With me, with, for example, with music. You look at music. It's it, it's powerful too, you know, to yeah. get people um, off the path. And it works. It, it definitely works. You know, when, when you're into music, when you really get into music, Quran and Islam and eventually you you know you realize yourself you are you're going far and far and far and far until one day it hits you and you're like what am I doing yeah you brother know, what's going that's, on? that's the empty. story of my life that's the story of my life because I, I signed I accepted Islam at the age of 17 but just before that at the age of 15 or 16 I signed my first record deal and wow. and I accepted Islam at the age of 17 but there was a vast majority of my life that I was in the music business. So I was I was touring and doing shows and producing music and so forth. I was a Muslim, yeah. but not a very good Muslim because you know, because that whole lifestyle of the music business. And there it's came a feeling, like, yeah. but there came a there came a day that everything got turned upside down. And literally I lost mm -hmm. everything, everything that I had, had been working for. Everything. I lost everything, literally. And but it was at that that time. As a matter of fact, I lost I lost my uh, you know, I was betrayed by some people that uh, you know a particular individual that I loved very much, uh, and and I realized that you know when it boils down to it, I don't need any of this. I need Allah, yeah, and yeah. that's when I recommitted my life. And from that point on, that's why we're sitting here right now because of that that situation is why we're here right now because that alhamdulillah. was alhamdulillah alhamdulillah akbar that was the motivation behind me me going on this journey to for the rest of my life i'm doing dawah i'm writing books i'm talking to people about islam because i realized how much time i wasted i knew the truth but i wasted so much time 
I wasted yeah. so much time. And Allah tells us and warns us uh, uh, in the Quran, in, in Surah Asr, what's he say? By the gift of time, surely mankind is in loss. By the gift of time, by the token of time that Allah has given us, he doesn't need time, time is for the human being. But by this gift yeah. of time yeah. that Allah has given us, most of mankind is in loss, except for those who do what? Who do good, righteous deeds, who guide one another in truth, in mm -hmm. patience, in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that therefore, when we know this, we have this knowledge as Muslims, we are we got to realize that we're going to be held responsible for that. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said on the Day of Judgment, we're going to be asked five questions. And it's going to be a, questions that are asked to remind us of what we've done in this life. And when we're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the books of deeds are brought out, when the scales are brought out, and we're going to be questioned by Allah, what did you do with your life? He already knows, but he wants you to to, to speak it. And yeah. some people are going to say, oh, Allah, I lived part of my life in, in, in Haram, and I, I lived my, part of my life chasing the wrong things, but I came to a day when I, I devoted myself to you, and I and I, I tried, you know. So what did you do with your life? What did you do with your 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 youth? What did you do with your wealth? How did you achieve your wealth? What did you do with your wealth? What did you do with your knowledge? So when we have a knowledge and we know these things, the most important question is, what do we do with our knowledge? Because who wants, we was talking about doing dawah initially. If you have this information about Islam and you're not, mm -hmm. you're not using it, in the best of ways, you're just letting it go to waste. On the day of judgment, you're going to be bankrupt. Yeah, you're going to be bankrupt. Yeah. You, you're storing all yeah. this up, and, and and you didn't spend it. Matter of fact, so what did you do with your wealth? Wealth of what? There's many things you could talk about regarding wealth. The wealth of knowledge that you've been you was gifted with just by being born to Islam, right? Mm. The gift of the, the the wealth of knowledge that you had. Well, how did you achieve your wealth? Did it just did you seek knowledge? But what did you do with the wealth? Okay, I'm not, we're not just talking about finances. Wealth is anything that we've been gifted with, right? But the wealth mm -hmm. of knowledge, what did you do with this this wealth? What did you do with that knowledge? Right? So this is these are crucial questions that we need to wake up and be reminded of on a daily basis. Think about these questions yeah. on a daily basis, literally, uh, and uh, realize yeah. how important this gift that we've been given, how, how important it is for our status on the Day of Judgment. And every time that we hear someone passing away, my oldest son passed away last year, right? But every time that I hear someone dying, someone celebrity on, or you know, some celebrity or some acquaintance that I know or someone that I know in my personal life and so forth, uh, um, you know, these are reminders to us that our time is coming as well. Yeah. And uh, man, we got to use our, we got to, this commodity that that great great gift of time that we've been given is so important. We got to spend it in the best of fashions. It's like ice just melting away. And what do you what do you want to do when you have you have ice in your drink? Which I don't particularly like ice in my drink. <laughs> to be honest, it dilutes the drink. But um, uh, but so but what do you want to do? You want to drink the the drink while it's still cold, right? And I'm not talking about any alcohol, by the way, for anyone who's thinking that. No, I'm just saying it, ice in general. Um, you know, you want to use the ice while it's still while it's still there for you to utilize it before it just melts away. Same thing with time; you better use it yeah. while you can because every second that's passing, obviously, is a second out of your life that's that uh, being you never get it back. And uh, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah. So, brother and sister, let's pick it up from there once again. In um, how did this online interaction? You know, uh, was it? Did you find? that uh, most of the conversation seemed to be about religion. Is that, is that w what it sounds like to me? Yeah. Or is it? Yeah. yeah. It was on yeah. the topic of Islam and, you know, the questions and, you know, basically it was, it was more about me finding out more about Islam and, you know, giving the information as well. So I was, you know, first time in my life, you know, someone showed so much interest where I could research up and, you know, look into it. And I, I felt proud to do that, you know. That Let me ask you this. It's, it's saying that. Did, did mm -hmm. she ever ask a question that you had to say, uh, I'm not really sure? And, and yeah, yeah let, many times. Let, let me know. Know. She'll ask me yeah, a question. The, the reason I ask you that because it's important because a lot of times people try to make something up on the fly mm -hmm. and they're giving, they're giving the wrong information, right? 
but but you shouldn't be ashamed to to say oh, I'm not sure about that but let me let me check let me check yeah and then the and yeah. guess what so in the in the process of of doing dawa and trying to give the you know trying to do dawa that's wonderful a blessing from Allah and then when someone presents a question that you don't have you can't really answer it but you take the time out to go find someone who doesn't have the information or you read and so forth on your own guess what you're worshiping Allah in the process that is a form yeah. of worship seeking knowledge is a form of worship and then conveying that that that, that information the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to convey from me even if it's just one verse so this information that you have you, you're supposed to share it and uh so for the muslims listening we don't all know everything right no one's no. going to know everything uh but uh we should be we should be willing enough to say you know what and be uh, be honest enough to say, you know what, that, that's something I can't answer right now, but I will, inshallah, I'll go and I'll try to find that information and get it back to you. And then every yeah. step along the way, trying to do so, you know, one 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 sin being removed and blessings are coming. A sin being removed and blessings are coming. And uh, alhamdulillah, so I just want to encourage people about that. So let's pick it up from there. So um, so it went from the online interaction to where did it, where did it go from there? I think when he... Um we was talking online in in terms of when I was asking him question about Islam I think what really kind of um changed my point of view towards Islam at the time as well it was that he was asking me questions as well about Hinduism and about um about Catholic uh, religion because I went to a Catholic school so he would also take interest and say Right. So what what happens in in Hinduism? Like, how do they pray? How what do they have kind of fasting and stuff the way they do in um, Islam? And yeah, they do, because um, even in Hindu religion, um, I remember my grandma would would fast for the whole month, but it wouldn't be as strict as it is in Ramadan. So they're allowed to eat like fruits and stuff like that. So it wouldn't be kind of a fast fast, but it would kind of be like a fruit fast kind of thing where you're just allowed to eat fruit and it was just the fact that he also showed interest in 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 my previous religion as well uh, in what I was following that mm. kind of changed my concept on to uh, what Muslims are like because usually if if you talk to Muslims nowadays and some people would just turn around and say, oh, so, you know, you, you're from a different religion, so obviously not going to understand it. And they wouldn't take that much interest in knowing what another person's background is. And I think it's all always important to kind of understand where that person is at that time and what level they're on. Are they ready to, you know, go on to that level where you can talk to them about Islam? Are they ready to uh, understand the knowledge kind of thing? And, and he kind of uh, used that wisely. Absolutely. I was, uh, while you were saying that, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Literally, this is what w went through my mind. Obviously, this sister has has married a very wise brother. Yeah. Very wise brother. And Alhamdulillah, brother. Uh, so I, I, I want to, you know, may Allah bless you, uh, brother, because you. It sounds like every step of the way that you you handled it so he handled it all so beautifully, uh, and it, it it's, and that is correct. I'm sure the brother wasn't asking you because he was thinking about reverting to uh, to hinduism by no means no. but he but he's just showing showing yeah. that he's willing to hear what you have to say and 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 understanding where to go from there uh matter yeah. of fact Allah says in the quran that we're to tell the the people to come to common terms between us and you that we worship only allah primarily to the jews and the christians uh hindus is a little bit different but but nevertheless come to common terms between us and you yeah and and um when I when I talk to people about doing like street dial, we go out and do street dial and so forth. Um, that I tell them, don't initially talk to people about Islam, and that, and that might sound crazy. We're out there to tell them about Islam, but the initial the initial discussion shouldn't be, you know, so direct. Uh, let them let them open themselves up, and um, you know, so I'll comment about their, you know, uh, if they have a a certain sport team that they're representing you know uh, you know that they're obviously a fan of or or whatever we'll just talk talk small talk initially and just get them to open up and to to trust in in the conversation you know and and then from there i'll usually ask them at some point along the way what do you know about islam 
you know, yeah. and just open it up. And, and but but initially it's got to be just a, a conversation. And it sounds like uh, there was a little bit of all of that mixed in there uh, with you asking him initially once again, which I find hilarious if he if he's ever shot a gun because you <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> um, but but the brother, you, listen, brother, may Allah bless you because you handled it beautifully. And now you have a, a, a you know, a, a Muslim sister here as your wife based on you using wisdom. And it's, alhamdulillah, it's beautiful, beautiful, truly beautiful, wonderful story. I love it so much. This story right here is, is I don't know, it's just so, it's, it's so special to me in particular. And I don't want, I don't, that doesn't mean to undermine any other, other reverts that have come on and told their stories. They're all beautiful. Uh, but uh, this is, this is a, this is a beautiful story. I love it. I love it very much. Okay, so <laughs> so let's pick it up from there. Um, once again, uh, and I don't mean to keep interrupting, but there's so there's so many uh, there's so much to talk about regarding this story that uh, I could talk all night you about. You can it, just but... expand on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so sorry about that. I talk too much sometimes, but let's let's pick it up again. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. So. Um... Yeah, in terms of a gun and stuff, you can still ask him he's there. And <laughs> even now, even now, um, he says to me, right, do you want to visit Pakistan? And I'm like, are you sure you're not going to hold a gun? And I still say you that. You still say so it. So I still brother, say when, it. When she first asked you, I, I would like to see the look on your face. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure you can't do it right now, but I'm saying I would love to have seen the look on your face when she asked you that. So when she asked you that, how, do you remember exactly what you said? Or you just said... You know, just I how did you? Because uh, uh, remember, I was the only Asian guy there working. Yeah. So I was like, I hope they haven't heard what she just said. <laughs> so I'm thinking because seriously, huh? they heard what she just said, and they must have been like, the whole conversation. That's beautiful. <laughs> that would have oh, been my like, oh, no, God. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to get fired. <laughs> oh my goodness! I, you you know, probably had some, about some gun, sweat start running gonna, down your back. Yeah, the gun was going to be pointed at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Now, now all the white people are looking over <laughs> at the Asian guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's funny, but it's not. Funny. It's funny, but it's not funny. But uh, it, it's it's sad and it's hilarious at the same time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! So, how, so brother, how did you respond to her again? Well, with me, it was like I said in my mind. I was thinking, what is she? You know, what is she talking about? You know, but then at the same time, you know, there was something running in my mind saying, you know, this is, this is all, you know, what you've seen the jihadi posters with the guys yeah. with the guns, the five guys with the guns, and they all lined up. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> not again. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh my goodness! No, no, no. no. What's funny is what's funny when I worked in Starbucks is when people would ask me where I'm from, they would never think I'm Pakistani. They would always say, "Are you from uh, Saudi Arabia? Are you from here? Are you from there?" And then I tell them, "Oh, I'm from Pakistan." I I've even got India. You know, are you from India? But nobody direct said, "Oh, are you from Pakistan?" So you know, <laughs> I, I, mean, I forget where she came from. There, you know, maybe I look exactly like them. You know, just put the she, gun in she the hand. <laughs> she thought you looked a little bit like these guys, but just uh, with a much different group. <laughs> now, now, look at these terrorists. Do these not look like uh, terrorists, right? Man, look, look at the sign right here. As a matter of fact, Islam is the problem. Yeah. Now, look at these yeah. characters, right? Now, this is what she was envisioning in her mind, right, sister? I mean, uh, other than uh, you thought yeah, they, they should be dressed exactly. in Muslim attire, but she so was envisioning these types of characters. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Let me remove this. Okay. <laughs> so that's funny stuff. Okay, so let's fast forward. We get back out of the coffee shop, but where it's a very funny interaction, beautiful inter interaction, and very romantic when it's all said and done. It's a very romantic story and it's a beautiful story. And uh so let's fast forward again. So it went from online and then when the sister come back into town, uh what, what how did it happen from there? So I was going to go to, um, I, I was going to, I'll let you go ahead in a minute. Go ahead. So I go was, was going to go to um, a university. So I was studying um, 
biology and chemistry at the time so as we continue to speak and and in the middle I was going away like to Dubai I was going to South Africa I was going to India for like six months in a row and I'd continue talking to him uh, via Skype I'd, I'd meet him in town like go see him where he's working and stuff and and obviously at the time I w- it was just the fact where uh, I, I was still learning about Islam so he would tell me that um, about the Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. He'd tell me about Jesus. He'd tell me about um, uh, Hazrat Fatima, the uh, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad. May peace be upon her. And and the story just continued. So it was just like small little parts of the Quran that he was kind of opening up to me. So um, when I, I uh, left college at the time, um, I was going to go to university to go study dentistry. Um, and then he just made a plan and he's like, right, okay, uh, do you want, are you sure you want to do your dentistry over here? So do you, are you sure you don't want to do it in the capital city and stuff? So I was like, yeah, well, it sounds like a plan. So we moved, we headed over to London where we lived together uh, for a little bit of time. And obviously it was, it was a point where we we were really wanting to be together. So it wasn't a point where, you know, you're with someone and you just, you just there like, for for the time of and obviously his family yeah. knew his family knew at the time as well that I was with him um so as I was studying um I thought to myself right okay I really want to be with this guy so let me introduce him to my family and then that's what happened I took him over to my family house where I'd, I'd try to tell him, tell my family that look this is a guy that I like I want to be with him because obviously at the end of the day his his mom told me that if you two want to be together, you've got to get married because other than other than marriage, your relationship's haram and it's not, you know, it's it's not a way that it should go on. Yeah. So I'm like, right, okay, there's nothing wrong with tying the knot. And obviously, you know, if if this is what it is, and yeah, fair enough. So obviously, I, I spoke to his mom and I says, right, okay, I'm going to speak to my family about it and go from there because obviously, I don't want to, you know, keep them in the dark. So I'd, I'd rather just be honest and open about it because they're going to find out one day or another anyway. Um, so I took him over to my family house. And like I said, to you, no one spoke to him. Uh, yeah, no one just spoke to him. And no oh, one wanted no. to know, no one wanted to know my point of view, why, why, why I wanted to convert, why I wanted to revert even. Um, and yeah, every, everything was just going upside down. And even when I got married, like that kind of uh, put my mother-in-law against me as well. The fact that none of my family was willing to accept me because when I reverted on the same day, my mom had gave me um, one of the idols, one of the statues that, um, that they carry it was just it was just a very small one but she found it inside my, my handbag and she was like what's this and I was like well I just reverted yesterday I can't get rid of it because obviously I can't chuck it in the bin or anything because that's me disrespecting another religion which Islam tells us not to do obviously we can teach another person that's from another religion Islam mm-hmm. but we can't disrespect that person or their religion yeah uh, so I says to her I went look I'll just give it to my aunties I had it over to my auntie's house and I gave her that statue so that kind of, with my parents not agreeing with with everything, it it kind of really really uh, turned the marriage relationship upside down as well in terms of my my mum in law wasn't happy at the time. Mm. Brother, how did it make you feel when you went to meet her family, and they literally didn't say a word, they didn't speak at all? I mean, well, what happened was I walked in and I was really scared. I remember feeling very, very, very scared. I was thinking, you know, two things are going to happen here. Either it's going to go my way or it's going to go the other way. So yeah. I was like, okay, whatever. I'm going to go there. I'm going to give it a try. You know, young blood, let's do it. Went there and not a word. They, they, they're speaking amongst themselves, but nobody's interested in who I am, what I am, you know. Or, about you how know, many people were there? You remember? At least 12, about 12 30. people. Oh, wow. Well, that's a big... So, so did they? Was the gathering uh, specifically to meet uh, Arib? Oh, no, so I rang my auntie. I rang my auntie. My auntie's my mum's sister because I I was like really scared to tell my mum anything. So I rang my auntie and I said, "Look, uh, this is what's going on, and I want to speak to someone about it." And she arranged everyone, like my mum, my dad, her brother, her sister, everyone to come and meet at my auntie's house so it oh, was okay. to gathering to see like all right let's let's see both of them and let's see what they've got to say kind of thing 
So no one spoke all, out of the 12 people. No one no. spoke to you I at mean, all? I mean, after our marriage, it was one of her uncles who has actually passed away now. He was the only person who accepted her as a Muslim and me as a Muslim. And he was mm. Hindu himself. He had no problem with me being Muslim, and he was the nicest person ever. And I remember, you know, saying to Safia, you know, wouldn't it have been nice if he was your father? Yeah, you know, yeah. the guy just accepted me. He, he didn't. He, he wasn't bothered. You know, he was just so happy that you know Safia is happy and I'm happy, and that's all. You know, he he was just like the way me and Safia are. You know, accepting and you know loving and caring, but no one else was like that apart yeah. from. And then you know, a couple of months after that, he passed away. You know, he was the only hope we had. And he passed wow. away as well. Mm. And and so has it still been? It's remained that that way to this day. You you've actually yeah. never had a conversation well, I mean, with no, him. Nobody, nobody seems to get in contact with us. To be honest, I mean, even from my parents' side, my mum's side, no one. They're, they're not really, you know. But with with my when we got married, my mum was happy. You know, she was like, "Okay, you get married, everything's good." But then a couple of days, well, I'd say the second day, the very second day after marriage, you know. Her and her sisters got into a bit of a, you know, argument about this, you know, about her being, you know, non-Muslim. And basically, I'd, what I think what had happened was they don't they don't believe she's a Muslim, basically, till this day. If you, you know, they feel like, you know, she's still Hindu and whatnot. And to be honest with you, I don't know how, you know, I don't know how to change people's minds. All I can yeah. say is, you know, you know, you know, you need to accept her and this and that, but... It, it, it just doesn't work out because when with my mum, the problem is my whole, you know, the whole of her family, her brothers, her sisters, you know, whoever, her, her aunties, they all think alike. They all think the same. And, and I'm the yeah. odd one out in, in a different way. So, you know, and especially when, you, when you're the son, you know, it's like, who are you? Who are you to tell us, you know, what's wrong? Yeah. You're wrong. Right? So then a, a day after... Um, this is where the sad start begins. After a day after we got married, we actually got kicked out of the house, so we had nowhere to go. And we were very young at that time. I still remember. And uh, the day you know, after you just, got married, what, what, it, yeah. you don't have to open up and say why, but what, but why? What I mean, why the day after you got married? So, you, so you, the the two of you were living with your family, correct, Arib? With his yeah, family, family, yeah. yeah. Why yeah. did they do that? Uh, I know the sister mentioned that on on the wedding day that the that, that your mom yeah, and everyone against your mom. Yeah, everyone but she was asked her. She asked mm -hmm. her if she knew how to, to do salah yet. You know, did she know how to pray? And she told her no, and that she didn't. That she kind of walked away with a, yeah. a frown on her face. Uh, um, yeah, so what I what mean, happened uh, that, that made you yeah. leave? I mean, I, I don't know what exactly happened. You know, obviously, you know, only my mum knows what actually happened. But the only second day, I remember, you know, um, they they just didn't want us there. You know, they were just like, you know, now you're married, go your own way, and this is it. And, I, you know, I remember how I felt. I yeah. felt like a lost soul. That very moment, I felt like, you know, I, I just wanted to jump off a bridge. The real how I felt, you know. I just felt like, you know, because I didn't, you know, when you when when your mother, your mother, your aunties, and you know, uncles, and everyone, you know, you you grow up with them, you trust them. As, as, as you grow up, you trust them, and you think in your mind and your heart, if anything ever goes wrong, your family will protect you. Yeah. But that was not the case. So when I when when we and Safia left uh, my 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 house, we went to my auntie's house, and she did the exact same thing. She didn't want us there. She was like, no, I'm not going to help you. Oh, it's between you and your mom. I'm not, I'm not getting involved. And this is where I realized the true face. You know, you know, there's two kinds of faces. You know, all this time I was trusting them, I was loving them, and I was respecting them. And that was the day where I realized, no, nah, this is all shambles. You know, then their true faces came alive. So yeah, when true. I needed them the most, nobody, none of my uncles, none of my aunties, no one wanted to know me. Yeah. You know, they, they just brushed me away like, you know, he never existed in the first place. We never knew him in the first place. So then, you know, me and Safia went through a lot of struggles. And, and to be really fair with you, if it was not Safia and it was some other girl, she would have left Islam on the spot and gone back to her family because yeah. we struggled. Wow. You know, we struggled very, very, very badly. And that scar, I mean, I, I, I'm sure Safia agrees, is still there to this day. That scar has not gone. Even though you know, yeah. we recovered, we we've, we've managed to work things out in life, and Alhamdulillah, Allah supports us, and every day, and you know we're blessed. But that moment of our life, 
was very precious to us. And what we were going through, you know, I, I, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But yeah, my my own family did that to me. Yeah. So, and, th and this, you know, this is a, an indication that, you know, when it boils down to it, you know, I, you know, I've gone through the sim similar things as well. Many people have been betrayed by mm -hmm. the people that are supposed to be closest to you, and yeah. it it it's an un, you know, I still feel pain to this day, but because yeah, of some things that have transpired to this, you know, and and like you just mentioned as well, it's 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 something that even though you forgive and so forth, you know, I forgive the the. Um, um, you know, I'm actually talking about my ex-wife, uh, you know, uh, I forgive my ex-wife, but the pain of what transpired still exists, you know? Yeah. And, uh, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a test from a lot because what it boils down to is that you realize that, um, when it's all said and done, it's you and Allah. Allah brings you into the world and yeah. we're going to return to Allah. From Allah we come into the Allah we return. And therefore, you know, it, it, it's, let's say, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Uh, it could be that, you know, the, you know, Allah, Allah says in the Quran, we'll sum it up with this. Allah says in the Quran that perhaps you love a thing and it's bad for you and you hate a thing while it's good for you, Allah knows why you do not know. So, mm -hmm. you know, the example of loving, loving things of this world, including other human beings, to the point that you begin, you you feel so dependent on these these individuals or these people, and uh, but sometimes these relationships are, are not good for you. And I'm not really talking about parents and so forth, but it could even apply to parents in some instances, right? And and this is nothing against anyone's parents, but but it's uh, just by an example, you know, these relationships that we rely upon or these things that we love in the world, inc including other human beings. Maybe these relationships are are not good for us in that if we stayed a, a part of this relate these relationships, maybe the negative influence would affect us to a point where we love these these individuals, but the relationship itself is bad for you. And but yeah. at the same time, so Allah says you love a thing which is which is bad for you, and you hate a thing which is good for you. So you hate you hate having those uh, um, relationships in, in regards to this context. The relationships broken, but the bro but the relationship being broken is the very thing that made you realize that that when it's all said and done, the the one that you can always trust to to depend upon is Allah. That's true. Always, yeah. always. That's because true. other human beings are. They can do nothing for you if not for a law, you know, allowing it to happen. They can do nothing. They can't harm you, and they cannot. They cannot do anything for you. So we know that we trust the the Father of the law. We, we trust His will for our life, and that if it's written for us, it's going to happen. If it's not written, it's not going to happen. And so, therefore, the, some of these things happen so that we we become closer to Allah, more dependent on, on Allah, and and uh, it, it's worth it. And it's all said and done. I think on the back of that, as in, um, sorry to interrupt you. No, um, um, I think I think the fact that his parents didn't uh, accept me was one because I was a Reva, as mentioned. Uh, two is because they found the um, the little idol thing, which obviously I never believed in anyway. And I think the third the third reason is because my parents uh, wasn't there at the time when I got married, so that kind of left. A bad kind of remark because in in our Asian cultures it was it's it works as the guy's family and the girl's family all get together and then they discuss like what's going to happen and stuff and at that point I remember I had a lot of um, bad words said to me like oh like like extreme bad words I, I don't really want to kind of say it because I don't want to kind of uh, swear or anything like that but bad words in terms of like you you'd, you'd you wouldn't you'd you'd only say it to a person that's like a prostitute or something like that yeah. and 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 it was them kind of words that I've had to listen to and at the time when when Arib said they kicked us out the very second day um of us being married and and I said to my mom my mom in law like look I'm a Muslim and obviously I, I accept Islam and it doesn't have to be that way and I remember her just just closing the door on us and at the time we didn't have 
a single penny on us or, or like no money whatsoever and in and we're lucky in England here we have the government that support us and because we were only uh, 18 at the time when we got married they gave us a flat where we lived and it was just a small little room where you it, it was a studio so you'd have your kitchen your bathroom and a small little bed it, all in one room yeah. and I just remember where we had literally nothing. We was we was literally surviving off pennies, and I just remember sharing food and just just being there for each other. And and I just just remember where one of my friends sent me a message, and she said, "It's light al If you re if you read um, the Quran tonight, whatever you ask Allah for, you'll be granted." And I just remember just staying up that night, and my life immediately changed. It, it, it actually makes me want to cry right now. Though. Hearing that, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. That's it's a Allah Akbar. That's a beautiful story. This is a beautiful, beautiful story. Obviously, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blessed each of you with a, a spouse that is very loving and very kind and, and and very wise. As a matter of fact, not just the brother, the sister is extremely wise. Yeah. And uh, my goodness, what a yeah. beautiful, beautiful story. A beautiful story. I mean, I, I, at the time when we were actually going through this, you know, no. these thoughts were in your mind, you know. When 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 you don't have food to eat and, you know, you think, okay, two weeks, I'm not going to get any money. You know, I don't have a job. I don't have anything. That's when the shaitan comes to you and says, now, you know, basically in your mind, you think, what can I do? And you don't care if it's halal or haram. You think, you know, what can I do to get this problem solved? And I think that pressure of doing something haram and, you know, you, you know, I think that was the most, I'd say, testing part of my life. Because yeah. somehow I, ma I managed to get through it without doing the haram. I just, man I don't know how we did it, you know, but we managed to get through that time without, because with me, I, I was very... You know, I was, you know, because I've been betrayed by my family and, you know, all this happening. No, no, you know, as a man, we're told, you know, once you get married, you should be sorted. There should be a house. There should be, you know, we're, we're told this list of things, you know, you're a man, you know, you're meant to be strong. You're meant to be, you're not meant to be weak and poor. And, you know, nobody wants to know that man, you know, they want to know these strong men. And, you know, how they portray men to be, you know, that extremely strong and extremely powerful and whatnot. And I was completely, you know, right down near the gutter somewhere. And I was thinking to myself, you know, and, and I was looking around. Where we lived at the time, there were many Muslims, many people. You know, there was masjids across the road. There was everything. Nobody, and I repeat, nobody cared about us. And no, I mean that. I nobody cared. When we needed the world the most, when we needed people the most, nobody cared. You know, no. nobody said, you know, you know, let's just help them out. Let's just talk to them. No. You know, and we I'm... had a, a, we had a little break as well, where where the where the mom would um, send like elder brother in laws and kind of stuff like that to kind of break the relationship, to break the marriage. And I remember where my mother in law just uh, invited my husband one day to come out towards a supermarket, and she she took him to his house to his mom's house and sent him straight to Pakistan after that. And she, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that he was going to go there. I didn't have a clue. And yeah. I was just left to it. And the night had gone by and then he'd text me that, oh, I'm in Pakistan or something like that. And yeah. it was yeah. just I a mean, shock. After, and I mean, and then the after time... that, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and then after that, um, I got a call from my mother-in-law, like the second or the third day saying, oh, um, he signed some kind of divorce papers and you're now divorced and you're not getting back together. And I was just thinking, what's going on? Because like, I, I was just questioning a lot at the time and I was just like, I was like, I've, I've left my parents, I've left everyone just for the sake of Allah. And, and I was just thinking like, what kind of a test like this is? And it was just, it was just something that it was unbelievable that we had to go through. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. This yeah. comment on the, this happened. comment on the screen right here. This is, this is my wife that actually made, made this comment. <laughs> This oh, has been such a good conversation, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, so, so, mm -hmm. so let, let me ask you, when, when, when you were in the flat, uh, we, we, in, in America we call them an efficiency, 
an efficient. So I know what you're talking about. I mean, literally, it's called an efficiency uh, apartment yeah. where it's got everything in one little room. And yeah, uh, we call it a studio. Yeah, a studio flat. So I know, I know you were young and so forth, and this, and uh, Sophia was new, you know, new revert. Um, w w were you praying at that time? Uh, was you was you doing salah at that time? Do you remember? Salah? No, I wasn't actually. Was I, I wasn't at all. I, you know, after what happened with me and my mother, I, I think for a few days I was an atheist because I completely, you know, I never thought life could do what it did to me. You yeah. know, I was on the verge of where, you know, I, I'd given up in life. If you, if you at that moment came to me and gave me a bag of, you know, you brought some bottle of alcohol and some cocaine, I'd sniff it and drink it because I was lost. Yeah. I was mentally, I was, I, I wasn't in this world. I was somewhere else. I, I, at that point, I think I was, I was, you know, like to talk about mental health. Yeah. I was somewhere, you know, right between, you know, suicide and, you know, life and death because nothing you know, the, the time was so hard. And the, and the worst thing is, I wasn't prepared for it either. You know, I, all my life I've had people, you know, um, look after me and I've always had what I wanted or, you know, I've, I had ways to get where I wanted. And I never, in, even for one second thought, I'd be married and this would be my life where I'm struggling yeah. in flats. And you know, who, who lives in these places? Drug addicts, yeah. um, alcoholics, People who are broken up with their wives, and you know all sorts of you know basically not nice people. People who come out come out of jail. They're living there, and, yeah. I, and I have to live in this block of twelve. You know, imagine there's twelve people living there, so twelve lives, and you're the only one with your missus. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so you can imagine, but when we're when we're bumping in the hallways and stuff, and and you know, it wasn't yeah. me. You know, I, I felt like that wasn't me, and you know what. what at the time, I felt like, you know, I, I didn't know what life had come to, you know. Yeah. I, I, I didn't have a clue, you know, what, what is going on at the time. But obviously, I mean, looking back at it now, Alhamdulillah, you know, we understand that this was a test mm -hmm. in a way where basically the whole purpose of why Allah did this was to make me and Safia as so Stronger. strong. Very right. strong. Yeah, you could come, you know, with a gun and, you know, you could say, you know, we're going to... You're both going to get shot down, or you know, we'll be like, shoot us down. Do yeah. us a favor because yeah. the, the level that has gone to now, yeah. you know, from what, your experiences make you stronger. But it's, just, experience, it's just the rope of it's just the rope of a lot that we're holding on to now, and it's just we're just holding on to it so tight that even if someone wanted to break that rope between me and Allah or anyone else that it's, it's just impossible because the love for Allah yeah. and the messenger of Allah is just so much that Alhamdulillah that's right. Explain. So that's right and Allah says in the Quran that truth is made clear from falsehood and whoever embraces the truth has grabbed hold of a trustworthy handhold that will never break that will never break yeah. and that doesn't mean that we're not going to go through tests where we feel you know, I, I I'll be honest. There was a time when I was I was mad at a lot, and I was like, uh, matter of fact, I was uh, after that that experience that I went through. It was like uh, there was a period where I was like, I'll just forget it. Just I'm just gonna live my yeah. life doing anything I want to, and, and just yeah. uh, just do whatever I want to, right? But but then there came a day when I realized, you know what? No, that's not that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. And so yeah. my personal do it. What I pray, you know. Uh, Nearly every every prayer, I nearly say, uh, nearly every prayer I say this, Oh Allah, you're my comfort, my peace, my protector, and I cannot make it without you. You're my comfort, yeah. my peace, and my protector, and I cannot make it without you. And because I mean it. So so when you say that, that you know, you're the, you know, when you say that uh, it's 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 raised your, your faith in Allah and so forth, and uh, I totally understand what you mean to where... Yeah. Nothing's going to turn me back at this point. Nothing in the world. I lost yeah. my, my oldest son last year to, to the, the accident, right? And alhamdulillah, the things that I went through before conditioned me to deal with that. And yeah. I miss my son dearly every single day. But, you know, uh, we know that Allah is going to test us. And therefore, my commitment is, in, is sincere. It sounds like yours as well, alhamdulillah. And and I encourage everyone out there to... to uh, um, you know, to, to make this commitment to Allah before, you know, w without the need for any 
any difficulty in this life. Now, remember, if the difficulty comes, it's actually a blessing in disguise. But Allah says in the Quran to seek help through patience and prayer. So being patient. So obviously you, you were you were patient along the way. You had no yeah, other choice yeah. but to be patient. So you had to endure it instead of going out and committing crimes like you had mentioned in order to survive or do, doing whatever you could do in order to survive. You were just patient. Yeah. So how, matter of fact, how did you get out of that situation? Obviously, you were patient. You were, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you were probably praying somewhere here and there. Maybe not not no, going to the slot. No, I, mean, I, 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 think, I think what it was was um, I, I was actually reading like, you know, like du'as, like, you know, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. You know, you keep yeah. reading it. That's, you know, that's, and, that's what you were you know, doing I'm, during the time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. That's, 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 that, I was going to say that's sufficient. It's sufficient. It's sufficient enough because... For one, you know, when, when you're struggling with something like this, I say sufficient enough. Let me put it in the right context and understand that where people aren't confused. Now, obviously, we need to be going to the prayer five times a day. But, but what, we're human beings, and when when you're when you're devastated to a point where you, you're like, I'm just broken right now. I don't know what to do, and all I can do is is cry out to Allah. But you're doing it through through the dicker, and you're doing it just through. You know, Allah Akbar. No, you know, no matter what, you, you're still. So inevitably, you're still praying. You're still praying. You're just not going through the prostration. Yeah. But uh, so that that's that's important. So in, in the process, inevitably, you were still doing it. You were seek, seeking help from Allah through patience, and indeed, you were still praying. Um, mm -hmm. And um, because the dua is still, you know, it's uh, you're crying out to Allah in, in the process. So how did so how, what did it go from there? How did how did the two of you get out of that situation? Um, so with me, um, I had I had my sorry, I keep talking over okay. you. I had um, my uh, my friend's mom, uh, the lady who I was telling you about, where I asked her what religion she was. Yes, I had her, so I'd I'd speak to her and I'd and I'd say to her, "Mom, look, this is what's happened because it literally was. It's it's something that I I can openly speak to her about. Where if I had any problems." The first person I'd, I'd try to contact is her because she's that close to me. I think I, I think she's more of my mother than my own mother. And I'd, I'd spoke to her and I'm thinking, like, look, what do I do? This All this is happening. She's like, look, just pray. And all you can do is just pray. And, and I, I kept praying, I kept praying. And it was there was a time where there was a tutor at the, at the local mosque and he was giving free Quran lessons. And at the time, he we came across the story of Prophet Ibrahim and how he was tested. And the, when the people tied him to the chair and tried to burn him and because he broke all the idols and left the axe in the biggest one's neck and said, oh, look, the biggest <laughs> one broke them all. And, and just looking at how our prophets were tested with, you know, health, with with wealth, with uh, uh, Prophet Ayub in the... Um, you know, with cancer and how his wife had to cut all her hair and sell it. And I'm just thinking if our prophets went through it, then surely this is this is nothing for us because we'd rather have the punishment here than in the hereafter. That's 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 the way I looked at it. And, and whatever was coming in the way at the time, I didn't really care about because I knew that Allah was there. And, and that's all I knew. Alhamdulillah. So are you telling me so during the time of that, you went to take some Quran classes? While yeah, they were free. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, so, Alhamdulillah. This is beautiful. Okay, because you know, uh, the the when I was going through my difficulty as well, what I did is, you know, I went through a period where I was like, I just forget everything, right? But when I came to my senses, what I did is I, I began to consume my time, literally, and that to the, to this very day, Allah Akbar. I began to consume my time literally, and if you, if I'm telling you, the only one who really knows is is my wife that's in the in the in the back room back there. But, um, but literally, I consume my time with the remembrance of Allah, literally. Yeah. Okay, yeah. seeking knowledge, doing the show, writing books, you know, trying to you know, that. This is what I do, and I began doing that, uh, and I encourage people that are out there listening right now. To listen to the story of these these uh, this brother and this sister, uh, and um, if you're being tested, then then focus your your attention on Allah, because it's it's a form of worship. Allah says in the Quran that He did not create the jinn and the men except to worship Him. Yeah. And when you're when you're going through struggles, Allah says, "Verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest." 
right? In the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. And when he said it's it's translated as, as verily, but so inevitably, surely, Allah is saying, surely, without question, right? Yeah. The remembrance of Allah is the highest of virtues, and you seek help through patience and prayer, and verily and truly, surely, in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. So while you were going through the, the test and the struggle, were both of you going to the Quran classes? No, it was just me. Alhamdulillah. But so I'm sure you took that story that you while you're going and you're going to the Quran class, I'm sure you came back and told the brother about it. I'm sure most likely. And yeah. uh, so Alhamdulillah, this is beautiful. Uh, it's it just it, what a wonderful, wonderful, fantastic story. I mean, and it's truly a blessing uh, for everyone. Really, literally everyone that hears it because that that test and trial that you went through. It made you stronger individuals, made you better Muslims, not just the Muslims, but the mu'min. Yeah. Or the true believers. And what does Allah say in the Quran? Did you think that we would, we would, did you think you would be left to say that we're Muslims, that you would not be tested like we tested those before you? And who is it referring to? The the, the ones that the, that the sister just mentioned, the prophets and the messengers of Allah, peace be upon them all, who were tested in greater ways than will ever be, be tested. And, you know, this is, this is, uh, um, you know, we, we need to hear about these stories. And, and by focusing on Allah and hearing these stories, we, we, we realize that, you know what, what I'm going through is difficult, but other people have been through far worse. There's other people going through far worse right now. And how did they make it? They focused their attention on Allah and they, they began to strive in the cause of Allah. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's how you endure it. So once yeah. again, do people think they'll be left alone to say we believe that we're Muslims, that they won't be tested? But surely we're going to be tested. And yeah. uh, alhamdulillah, this is beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So how did so how, where did it go from there? So brother, how did you um, how did you get yourselves? At, so sister, when you started going to the masjid to take these Quran classes, were y'all were y'all still together at that time, or was that a period where y'all uh, you, you went different directions? Uh, no, so it was just with um, the the black sisters, I'd say. So it, they were all black and uh, the, the Quran teacher uh, as well. And he was basically just giving free Quran lessons. And I heard it through my friend's mum. And at the time, it was just a, it was just like two hours on a Saturday, on a Sunday. And we'd go from um, Asar time up until Maghrib. And we'd pray together. We'd learn Quran together. We'd read the Hadith together. And... In fact, I've even got the Hadith right here, right now. And, and I was presented, I was gifted it from the Quran teacher that I, that was teaching me at the time. He gifted me this Hadith and I've still got it up until today. And it's one of the best Hadith that I've ever read. Um, now, and what, what is the Hadith, sister? Um, it's Hadith for beginners and it's by Sheikh Mufti Safo Islam and it's it's got this blue cover on it, this one. Yeah, okay. And now listen, now, th now this is crucial and vital. This is the point. I've got to interrupt you here just briefly. I talk yep. too much, but this is so beautiful because now the, the this group of sisters that were doing the Quran classes and this brother and, and so forth that gave you this hadith, and now here it is all these years later, okay? Now they're doing dawah. They're taking time out to do dawah, right? You're going yep. at a time when you're struggling and you're you're – you're increasing yourself in knowledge by the will of Allah. And they're, they're getting blessings that day for all that they're doing. They're going to get blessings on the day of judgment. Now, everyone who hears it, it's trickled down to where it's affected you in your life at this point. And so yeah. for every, every instance where you're reminded of those situations and so forth, because these Muslim brothers and sisters affected you in this way and doing dawah. Yeah. Now they get blessings for every time it, it affects you in a positive way. Right, they're going to get blessings on the day of judgment for it. And now, anyone who hears your story, they're also getting they're getting blessings for anyone who hears your story and is affected by it in a positive way. The people who helped you, they get blessings. You get blessings. These people yeah. who are hearing the story are getting blessings. I'm getting blessings. Alhamdulillah for bringing the, this to the show. Right, right. Alhamdulillah. That, that's, that's, I, that's why I do this. I don't. I'm not getting paid to do this. I do this for the day of judgment. Right. Yeah. And so. And that's what I'm trying to convey to people, right? The importance of, of, of focusing on Allah and realizing that you're a Muslim 
and your objective is to do dawah. That's our obligation, our opportunity, and our great blessing that we've been given. And it's it's a it's like a, a pyramid scheme in righteousness. In the pyramid scheme, and I hate to put it in that that term, but it it's it's that if everyone does their part, oh my goodness, Alhamdulillah, the the blessings multiply. The blessings multiply because anyone that we guide in some way. And you know, is is a means for us to get blessings. Anyone they guide based on the guidance that we've given them, you know, by Allah, then we get blessings for that as well. Get, yeah. So that's this is and important. not only yeah. not only that, but it made me so strong because, like I said, straight after uh, the times of struggle and stuff, it was a time where we had a break up in our relationship. Um, where my mother-in-law sent my husband to Pakistan and that time I was still attending these Quran lessons and I still didn't stop but the thing is that when my husband went to Pakistan um, oh I was just reading the comments sorry yeah, that's, that's my wife she's saying that oh. she says from what started out as how we met story has turned into a beautiful <laughs> renewal of faith story and that's yeah. it, it's, it's absolutely a renewal of faith as well yeah absolutely alhamdulillah Definitely. go ahead sister uh, but when when he went to Pakistan, it, I even though I was living alone, I didn't have any kind of friends around me, family around me. And just by attending that grand lesson, it gave me that kind of uh, feel of the presence of Allah that I don't need anyone. I don't. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to whinge. I'm not going to rant because I've got Allah. And and that made me so happy that I was just continuing my life. I, I eventually found a job. I started saving up money. I got out of the flat and I moved to another place. Alhamdulillah. And it, and it all happened for the greater good. So I can't be more thankful. Allah Akbar. Brother, how did you, how did, so how did you wind up in Pakistan? What was going on with you that, uh, uh, that you were sent there and, and, you know, what was transpiring there? So uh, were, were, were the two of you, at some point, were the two of you at odds with one another or it's just the circumstances just happened? So how did that happen? I think it was it was written from Allah to happen. That's the way I look at it because yeah, sure, sure. there was a lot in Pakistan that I learned. You know, there were so many things when I went to Pakistan. Let, let me just stop I, there. Let me stop there just one second. Man, this is getting more and more beautiful. Every literally every every step of the way. Because now, guess what? Now, now by the wisdom of Allah, by the wisdom of Allah, He brought you together. Now, then you were tossed out of, of, the, of the mother's house and the aunt wouldn't take you. Now you're living in this flat. Now, in the process of that, now you're separated. Now, each of mm. you independently, you don't have the other person. Now, who do you have? You only have no. Allah. Yeah. All, all you have is Allah. And on the day of judgment, you know, as much as, as, much as you love each other, right, you're going to stand before Allah individually. Now, it could be that you may wind up being husband and wife again in in in, in paradise could be as I mean, probably so I, mean, I would assume inshallah you know so uh Allah knows best but i think that's the way it's going to work out but um but but the fact of the matter is the first and foremost is that you had to independently independently once again uh with the sister being a revert you know new to islam and the brother being traditional but didn't grow up you know um, practicing so much and then you know, went through this experience and now you both had to come to your own, you know, uh, develop your own true, sincere faith in Allah being separate from one another. So this is important. Brother, let's pick it up from there. So what what was going on with you over there? So basically, I mean, at the time when, um, you know, like when, when I actually left, you know, I went to Pakistan. Prior to that, I I remember the state of mind was I was lost. I was so lost, like, I, I, and and you know when you, I was lost to the point where I didn't even know, you know, what's going on, what to do. Like I said, if you told me to, you know, this is the the cliff, jump off, I probably would off, you know. So Pakistan is, is not a big deal. So anyway, I ended up in Pakistan, and I, I was there for around five to six months, and you know, as I was there, depressed person, you know, I was just depressed in Pakistan, and you know, people could see it, you know, this guy's depressed, you know. And, yeah, you know, start meeting a few people. And, you know, the youngsters wouldn't meet me in Pakistan. They don't, you know, the lively people, you know, they don't want to meet someone who's depressed, even yeah, though he's yeah. the same age. 
You, you know what I mean? They didn't want to know me. So who wanted to know me was the elderly, you know, the, the, the elderly, you know, the people who had nothing to do, you know, they just pray the namaz in the masjid and come out and just sit and talk all day. So I was, I was, I was hanging around with these type of, el- you know, elder men. And, you know, talking to them and, you know, their way of living life and how they lived through youth and they'd explain to me, you know, like what they've been through and, you know, how life was for them and, you know, just talking one. And I realized, you know, these these guys were so much like, what, you know, you, you couldn't learn what I was learning from these elderly men, from anyone else. Alhamdulillah. I mean, the yeah. best people, you know, I could have ever ended up with. Ever, you know, yeah. if you said to me, you know, go to this mufti, go to that movie, no, 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 go to these guys from the village, they were the best, you know. Yeah. So, the so eventually, go to the house and you know, they have nothing in the houses, you know, they're poor, but yet they're offering you food, you know, they're offering yeah. you, you know, you know, they know I'm from England, they know, they know the guys come from England, and you know, it, it you know, he's you know, we're, we're, we're naturally more well off, and but it didn't affect them, and you know. Like, like we were saying, you know, before you got into Islam, talk about the football shirts or something. That's what yeah. they did with me. They would yeah. talk about random music and, you know, like stuff that I was interested in, you know, yeah. and, and they just go on and on and on and on. And at the end of it, like two, three days later, they'd mention something, you know, you know, how about you come to the mosque tomorrow? Or how come, you know, you do this and you do that? And, you know, I just start hanging around with the elderly people and, you know, they tell me stories or, you know, some of them were telling me like miracles that happened with them. You know, there was one story that I heard about, you know, this car story where he didn't have any car, um, um, what's it called, uh, engine oil in his car. And, you know, he ended up somewhere and the car just stopped. And he goes, you know, I, I was reading the or something, he goes, a random man stops me. And he, you know, from that day, it's been like three years. He goes, my car has no engine oil and it still works perfectly. And, you know, they were, yeah, yeah, they were telling me all these things. And, you know, at first I was thinking, well, you know, what, what is going on here? You know, and, um, you know, what, why, why are they telling me this and what not? But then as life went on, you know, now I realize what they were saying. Where was I when I went to Pakistan and where am I today? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. completely, I couldn't even think at that moment when I went to Pakistan that, to, you know, five years from today, I would even be alive. You know, yeah, th- yeah. that's how that's how mentally disturbed, you know, that, you know, all these things have made me into, you know, a completely different human being. And, you know, thanks to these people, you know, there was one elderly person who I, I, I always, you know, you know, I always went to his house and, you know, we always spoke and everything. And he, you know, a few days later he passed away. And my uncle, who I was with at the time, you know, um, you know, at the Janaza, we went there and all his family comes to greet me. Every single one of them are coming. And my uncle's thinking, how do you know these guys? Because he didn't know. I was hanging yeah. around with the, with the LD people. He didn't have a clue. He thought I was outside, you know, just, you know, chilling somewhere, you know, yeah. just, you know, doing things to do. But I wasn't. I was actually with the village guys, just chilling and, you know, just learning more about myself. They, they, what they were teaching me was, do you know, like, you have, do you know what I liked about these people? They didn't treat me as a youngster. They treated me as an adult. Yeah. So when yeah. they spoke to me, they spoke to me as an adult. So th- there was no, you know, fairy tales, you know, none of that. It was just straight talk. And as time went on, even till today, their words are still playing in my head. You know, sometimes yeah. something will happen. Something will happen. And I- I'll remember the thought of when they told me this. Allah and Allah, it, that's I- great. And I go through it, you know, and, and, and that's how it is because these people were truly from heart Muslims. You know, there's Muslims who, who dress like it and, you know, but, but they'll have a drink now and then. You know, they, yeah. they'll have a smoke on it. You yeah. know, because it's, it's just a show, in it? You know, my dad likes it. My dad, you know, taught me how to do this. Uh, so this is how I am. Oh, my uncle follows it. That's This is what, how I am. But these people were truly from the heart. You know, the, the way that, you know, the way they spoke, the way, they, you know, they treated me, the way they treated everyone. They never, you know, these people were completely, you know, if, if I was to give a perfect example of a Muslim, it was them. These, yeah. these were the people. Because these people had love for everyone. They had care for everyone. They had nothing, you know. They didn't, you know. I, I feel like sometimes they even struggle for food, but whatever little they had, they fed me. Allah Akbar. That's beautiful. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's the no, same thing the Prophet no. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. Yeah, that's right. And that that's... reminded me. Of, mm, that reminded me of me my moments when I was in England and I was struggling with money. What was I complaining about? Look at these guys. And and I think you know how Allah, you know, 
how, how he plans these things in your life. And you don't, you know, at the time I was angry, you know, let's go commit suicide, let's go do this bad thing and blah, blah, blah. And then you go, you go back home and you see these beautiful, beautiful people and they're living far worse than what you went yeah. through. And they're not, they're not, they didn't complain once. More like they're telling you, it's all right. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Inshallah, Allah will do something for you. And they're praying right. for you. Alhamdulillah. And, and, and I think that, that was when, you know, like, do you know the heart felt something when I went to Pakistan? It, it moved. It really did. Alhamdulillah. This is a beautiful, beautiful story. Listen, listen, if you're watching right now, make a point to share this link with other people. Uh, because other people can be so inspired by this story. Now, these 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 elderly gentlemen, gentlemen that you're talking about, now they had nothing, and you know the dawa it was still strong. They were still guiding you to the truth and still you know uh, um, giving giving you hope. In in you know you, you come from a, a situation where you had it sounded like you had anything that you wanted. Then you had a period where you had nothing. And now you go to mm -hmm. these people who really have nothing and they, yeah. they're encouraging you and it makes you realize, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how, how much you actually do have. And so this is yeah. Dawa. So those brothers on the day of judgment, you know, based on the, you, you sharing the story and talking about these brothers that we'll never lay our eyes on, but these brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they've done. It's been recorded yeah. in, in, you know, the, these, these things that we hear, even though we may never know these people, on the day of judgment, inshallah, inshallah, we meet these people and we're able to say, you know what, on on you know uh, uh, November the twenty first, two thousand and twenty, uh, Sister Safia and her husband Arib came on and they told us about you brothers, Alhamdulillah, yep. and you inspired me, you know, and may Allah bless you, you know, and give you give you uh, the sadaqah for the, on the day of judgment for for all the people that you inspired through this story. Uh, because these people that were struggling, you know, this this, this is beautiful, man. This this is a, a a beautiful, beautiful story. I love this this story. And uh, someone said, matter of fact, it would be it would make a beautiful book. Whoever said that, you're, you're absolutely correct. And um, it's a beautiful story. It really is a beautiful story. And um, so so during that time, were were you in communication with one another? It sounds like you probably didn't have or yeah. you were, you yeah, were a little we bit. Were. It was, I mean, in the internet in Pakistan, is, um, it's not great. So, you know, you'd, you'd be talking, you know, maybe I'd write a message and, you know, basically it was maybe, you know, a few messages. I, I think first three months, there was nothing. After that, we, you know, managed to get this, my uncle managed to get this Wi-Fi router for himself. And, you know, that would work maybe an hour a day. So mm -hmm. just that's about it. But the main thing, like, like I said, you know, all this was planned from Allah. You know, and, and, and now I can see it clearly how, how how it fit through. It was connecting dots. And, yes. you know, Alhamdulillah, today, you know, we're so happy and, you know, how, how things actually happen. And at the time where you think, you know, you give up and, you know, there's no one there to support you. The whole world, you know, feels like, you know, complete disaster. But then you somehow work your way out of it. And you come to a point where you think, you know, Allah, subhanAllah, you know, and that makes your faith in Allah and the Prophet and, you know, Islam so much more strong, so much and more, then, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and there were a time as well where, um, where he was in Pakistan and every time I'd go to sleep and I don't know, I don't know why, but every time I speak about the Prophet and I, I just feel like crying, I don't know why. Um, but the, oh, the, But there's a time where... Um, I'd like I'd go to sleep and I'd, and I'd hear the azan in my sleep, or sometimes I'd see the Prophet's mosque in my sleep, and yeah, it, it's 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 so beautiful because it's like Allah tries to kind of calm you down in different ways, and for me to calm down, it was seeing the Prophet's mosque in my sleep. It was seeing, you know, where you go into Medina. I've never been to Medina, but. As of my dream, I imagine this is what it is when you go into the Prophet's masjid, into the Prophet's mosque, and you go to the gates and, and there's a Prophet's, uh, the tombs there, and, and there's just like massive bright light kind of thing. And to see that in your dream, it's just it's just like meeting the Prophet in real life. And yeah, it's just it's just so different. Some, someone's asking, was asking in the chat, uh, why are you living separately? But they're not separately. They're just in different rooms on different lap laptops. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's downstairs. 
Yeah, she's <laughs> down. He's downstairs. She's upstairs, and it just makes better for uh, just the, the the conversation. But the yeah, they they actually yeah. live together. Matter of fact, I just shared the sisters' channel. Um, I put support the sisters' channel, and uh, it's it's uh, Super Sophia Islamic. And support her channel. Go make sure you go there and subscribe and follow the sister. And uh, okay, so we've been on for about two hours and almost uh, eight minutes and thirty four seconds at this point. This is a beautiful story. And um, uh, so we've had some people, some brothers backstage. I don't know if you'd like to maybe talk to these brothers just briefly before we close the show out. Um, yeah. But uh, so let me bring the, these brothers on. So brother Mohammed. Uh, be ready, because here I'm bringing you on right now, the brother Muhammad from in Australia. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Also, brother Raiz Dar. Assalamu alaikum, brother. And Smeet the child. Assalamu alaikum to all of you brothers. And so let's let's go let's go through uh, each one of you. And brother Muhammad, we'll start with you, and we'll go we'll go in line in that order. Um, uh, so, what do you think about this beautiful story? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My Welcome good lord, well. thank. Thank you very much for Arab coming on. Arab, uh, kids, when you were uh, trying to talk about your parents, I was I was hoping I was there to give you guys a hug. Are you guys okay? Oh. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. You, you both are like my kids, okay? So I was quite concerned. You know, uh, uh, my concern was this, that, you know, even the little uh, small uh, cat is feeling... Uh, 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 emotions <laughs> and uh, guys guys amazing how you've go, gone through in such a young age and such a difficult yeah. time and uh, I'm so glad you guys pulled through Alhamdulillah it is so, yeah. it is so mm -hmm. vital for you two to pull through this life because it's very very important not for both of your lives but for the for the sake of uh, uh, values of uh, 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 religion. Yeah. You both yeah. need to tie yourselves together, hold on to each other. I know it's very difficult time you have been through, both of you. Uh, unreal. I cannot believe I, I watched the uh, video of uh, Beta, what, uh, uh, Sophia, and she <laughs> didn't cry when she uh, was explaining how she uh, lost her parents. But it is a very, very difficult time. And I'm so glad you guys pulled through. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. And are you guys doing all right? Alhamdulillah. Okay yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, we're, no. we're much better now. Yeah. Good. That's what I want to hear now. All right, brother, look, better look, look after yourself. Yeah, you yeah. have a Thank you. broad shoulders and look after each other in the in the it's 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 long road ahead yet yeah. mm -hmm. it's very long road and i'm very confident one day someday you're both gonna find happiness the one you cannot even imagine inshallah, inshallah. have faith inshallah. have faith inshallah and the tie and the rope you guys are holding on will never let you guys down. Yeah. In short. yeah. I want to welcome Brother I'll Ramsey. Other brothers say the, uh, what they want to say. And I, I had a question. I was I was so emotional with your story. And oh, bless you. Brother, if you have a question, go ahead and ask him real quick if you have a question. I want to just welcome I Brother forgot. Ramsey. I want to welcome Brother yeah. Ramsey just quickly. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ramsey. And we'll get to you shortly here in a moment, brother. But uh, brother Muhammad, before you we go to someone else, do you have a question for him? You can ask a question if you have it. Brother Muhammad? Yeah, that the, the question I had actually I nearly forgot now. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was so emotional with their story. I was yeah. touched. I was feeling for them. They are just like my kids. Yeah. So you know, and especially when he uh, uh, brother Arab gone to Pakistan. That was a difficult time, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Alhamdulillah, it was wisdom of Almighty. That's right. Yeah. Who was showing? Who was showing how others are? Mm -hmm. If we, if, if we, if we yeah. are uh, in depressive mood, Allah show us how others sometimes are more in the situation than us. 
That's right. And then we will value our situation sometime. That is no. Yeah. Allah says that I will never test you more than your capacity. That's right. Definitely. Yeah. Yes, Arab, I understand exactly how you felt when you were lost. Yeah. Trust me, that can happen again in our lives. <laughs> And it can come back again and again for different, different reasons. But the most important part, always we will say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah mm -hmm. Akbar, Allah Akbar. That's and right. that's the beautiful part you haven't, it was still embedded in you, Brother Arab, and probably mm -hmm. it has saved your life as well. Alhamdulillah. And yeah. the question is, um, from last one and a half year, how is your life progressing well? Are you guys back into workforce now or how, how are you guys dealing with life now? Yeah, so when we um, yeah. when this breakup happened, it happened around 2015. So from 2015 until 2000, I'd say about 2018-ish, I'd say, it was it was a really like a big struggle path and it was just hectic it was everything was just all over the place but alhamdulillah now since since a few years everything's come back in place and yeah everything's just perfect it's it's actually better than what we had imagined because we thought yeah. okay we're never going to be able to get out of here but alhamdulillah everything's just changed so rapidly and it just feels like it was just yesterday when these times were then today they're gone yeah. But brother okay, Arab, so. brother Arab is very quiet. His face, uh, I can feel that you know, <laughs> brother Arab. Uh, I have a fatherly, fatherly suggestion for you. Take it easy, mm -hmm. brother. Life will resolve yeah. everything within the time when the time comes. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. inshallah, we will witness inshallah, inshallah that your lives will be inshallah become brilliant. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. And Thank you, Brother Muhammad. And uh, may Allah bless you. The brother, Brother Muhammad, is always, he's always got kind words for, for everyone who comes on the show. May Allah bless the brother. He's so he's got a very, very kind heart. I love this brother so much. So let's go to Brother Raiz Dar. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, what do you think about this story? It's again, glad to see, see you smiling on the show. Thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. I was, uh, we were waiting on Brother Muhammad, and I, and I guess me, brother was also waiting on the back, back there. So, uh, I almost cried uh, when Ari by, <laughs> uh, you know, I was giving yeah. uh, information about how they went through. I mean, how difficult time they went through. So uh, then I was uh, a verse, or, or I'm not sure whether it's a hadith or it's a verse from Quran. Which says fa inna ma usre sra, so that says uh, that says for indeed with hardship there will be ease. That's right. So it's yeah, it is. Allah, it's Allah who is promising you that you know for hardship there would be ease. So now how how when where? So let's leave that up to Allah, and that's yeah. how I'm sure you guys yeah. have been through tough time. I mean it's. I mean, trust me, it was so emotional. I was, uh, I mean, my eyes were full, full of, you know, tears. I, and, and then I was doing something else and then I left everything else and then I was completely watching the story. I'm such a beautiful story. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, beautiful. I had to, yeah. I had to fight it back as well. I had tears get it in my eyes as well. It's a beautiful story. Absolutely. Beautiful story. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful story. Brother, yeah, you have any questions for him before uh, we'll go to someone else? Uh, no, I don't have any questions. Okay. Just uh, you know, may Allah bless us all, and yes. may Allah bless us with the right path, righteous path. I mean, I mean. Thank you very, very much, brother. It's a uh, uh, good to see you smiling, and, and uh, Alhamdulillah. So, brother, brother Smeet, Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you? Alaikum salam, brother. I am good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, wow, <laughs> I've not been on the show for so long, and then like today, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, brother Eric, um, Alhamdulillah, I, I definitely, I definitely feel the way I, I'm a, I'm a revert myself from uh, Sikhism, Alhamdulillah. Uh, oh, apologize, gosh. I can't uh, on my video because I'm in the masjid, it's gonna be Fajr time now here in Malaysia. Oh, mashallah, <laughs> yeah. oh. yes, but uh. I'm I'm not I'm not the guy to cry. Really, I'm not. 
But I was weeping when I heard this story. Mashallah, <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Uh, it's, it's, it is so, so great to hear your story. It's really, really, um, at one point in my life, uh, when, when I accepted Islam, uh, it, it was very hard for me to, uh, I was kicked out from my house and all, but Alhamdulillah, it all worked out very well. Um, yeah. Brother, I, I've got a question for you. Uh, brother Arib, mm -hmm. you are in the UK, right? Yeah, yeah. Brother, if you need anything, anything at all, get in touch with me, inshallah. I have a house there. I, I was actually brought up in the UK, uh, in uh, Kensington, Chelsea. I live at World's End. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever no, need I'm, anything, no, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, brother. I mean, th that's the thing, you know. At, at the time when we needed something, there was no one there. Today, Alhamdulillah, Allah has gave us everything, and everyone's offering. You know, I can help you here, I can help you there. And, you know, it, it's all Allah. Alhamdulillah, and, and, and that's how I wanted. That's how I wanted to stay. Yeah, and and the good thing is, the good thing is, so for brother brother Smeet, now this is this is the beauty of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we know that Allah blesses us for our, for our, our efforts and our intentions, right? And so, yeah. you know, the brother gets blessings in the in the event that something might happen in the future, uh, and you need help. The brother, you know, his intentions are are are, are pure. Oh, very clean. Right. Yeah. So let's pray that Allah Subhanahu yeah. wa Taala doesn't, uh, um, you know, that He makes ease in our tests and trials. But surely Allah is going to guide us to what's best, no matter what happens. So, uh, so only Allah knows what's going to happen in the future. But uh, brother Smith, you know, may Allah bless you for your intentions to yeah. to, uh, to try to help him. And um, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Anything else, yes. brother? Yes, just uh, one more thing, brother Arif. Um, if we could get in touch on Facebook or anything, what I'm doing right here, right now, the, the, the thing that I'm doing in Malaysia right here, just discussing with brother Reis and brother Bati, is that I am actually doing dakwah to the sick, to the sick community. And mm. over here is uh, it's a little bit different. Um, for the past few months, I've been persecuted. I'm actually in in, in hiding at the moment. Uh, oh. yeah, uh, yeah, there are six who uh, who who actually I, I don't want to say, but you understand. Yeah, so but I'm I'm still gonna go on. I was just asking to all the brothers over here. So all the brothers and all the sisters, even uh, brother brother um, Kali Kit Rumzi, inshallah. Yeah, <laughs> if you guys could just um, help me to get some. Uh, 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 research uh, or point me in the right direction to look at some uh, early historic evidence for the Mus uh, Islamic uh, civilization, especially the Mughal Empire and all the claims that, that, that happened, inshallah, yeah. Okay, okay. That yeah. really helped. Yeah, that's a great, great blessing. Uh, bro Brother Raiz, you have something to say there? Um, I'm so sorry for the interruption. Yes. So, uh, br Brother uh, yep. uh, uh I mean, uh, see, I, I, I'm a Muslim. I mean, you're from India, I guess. That's what I mean, right? You're from, you were from India. I don't know. You were living somewhere. Sorry, I, I, I can't hear you. It's quite, quite soft, actually. Yeah. So speak up a little oh, bit, yeah. Brother Raiz. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, were you from in are you from India? I mean, uh, or are you from any other country? No. So, um, uh, well, my, my forefathers is obviously from India. But I'm, I'm born in Malaysia. I was raised in England. And now I'm back in Malaysia. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, one question I have, I have for you: Do you understand Hindi, Urdu? I mean, do you understand that language? I mean, if I may ask. I can speak oh. Hindi very well. <laughs> so then, uh, then, brother Smith, then there is one, uh, you know, uh, one, uh, what, how do, one Maulana. I mean, he he was from Pakistan. I, I'm not sure whether you know or know him. Uh, I mean, he all he died in 2010. Back in 2010, uh, Maulana Muhammad Asrar. His name is Maulana Muhammad Asrar. Uh, I'll share some of the clips or uh, some of the, you know, some of the, uh, I mean, uh, what do we call it? Some of the, in, in, on Fridays, what do we do? I am um, for, I forgot almost everything. Oh, the so was, oh yeah, Kudba. I'm sorry. Yeah, good. So uh, I'll share clips with you uh, now since I have you added on Facebook. So, um, uh, he is the guy, and I mean, uh, he's the guy who can, you know, 
basically you know notion uh, even if, I, if i'm a, if i'm a beginner beginner you know he can i mean you can start from zero sure. and i i assure you you know uh, watching his clips and uh, the khutbas that he has given uh, you know over the past 25 30 years i mean like i said he's no more may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know bless him with jannah and i mean uh, and uh he's the only guy i've seen so far you know i i was born muslim i mean and i am muslim and i continuously watch his clips and they are pretty you know encouraging clarifying and i will share the clips with you i'm sure they will clarify some of the doubts you might have you know even if even if i'm even i am a muslim right now i do watch his clips right now even that clarify my doubts and i regularly watch his clips again and again so that you know i remain you know because uh, you know you you ne- you can never be perfect i mean That's nobody right. in this world is per- perfect so i uh, always do watch his clips and i will share the clips with you i'm sure they will be pretty helpful for you Inshallah. i'll share the clips with you sure. okay thank you brother may allah bless you oh, for your your intentions brother smith if you'd like to come on and uh, when things die down i don't know you know you said you're in hiding right now so Uh, but if you'd like to come on at any point and, and be a part of the uh, – do a segment for Reasons to Revert, contact me. Matter of fact, send me an email. You can look me up on Facebook or contact me at, at uh, info at kennybomber.com. Uh, that's my email. I will, so, I will love to do that. Brother, actually, I have your number, brother. You have my number? I have your WhatsApp number. Okay, yes, I have your WhatsApp number. <laughs> okay, I can't, I can't remember. Okay. All right, just contact <laughs> me on WhatsApp or, or wherever, and we'll make it happen, inshallah, whenever you think it's appropriate, in, inshallah. So let's go yeah, to uh, – Let's go to Brother Ramsey and thank uh, Brother Race and also Brother Smeet. And let's go to Brother Ramsey. As-salamu alaykum, Brother Ramsey. How are you? Alaykum as <clears throat> One second, sorry. Okay. Can I get a drink? Sorry. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. Uh, As-salamu alaykum. Alhamdulillah. Um, mashallah, very amazing story. Um, the verse in the Quran that kept on coming in my mind was uh, from Surah Al-Kabulat where uh, Allah says, do those who I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Do those who say yeah. they believe think that they will not be tested? And you know, and then the mentioning of I forget exactly who exactly was it because I was I was listening, I wasn't watching most of the time. The uh, yeah. the prophets and all the yeah. struggles they went through, you know, and you know, people. It's 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 almost um, a common. It's almost like a, a trend, you know, like Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was rejected by his by all of his people, and now he's claimed by most of the world. Mm. He went from the lowest to the highest. You know, the the Prophet ﷺ, you know, he was thrown out of his home, and he came back to his home with ten thousand followers. Um, and so, you know, this uh, I think this is just one. This is just a classic example, a very amazing example yeah, yeah. of um, you know starting low and working working your way up. Because, um, and I guess the question I had is, um, would you agree? Would you guys say and agree that um, nothing else? That every nothing that without Allah, everything else is meaningless, and with Allah, everything else in the end th- th- doesn't matter. Or yep. is that you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I definitely kind of, agree. Yeah. yeah, but I think before we actually, you know, we were into Islam and everything. You know, nothing moved you. You know, like. Do you have something that moves you or you have a purpose in life or something? You know, you're like, you're blank. You know, you just think, okay, you know, we'll watch TV all our life and, you know, and one day we'll die. Whereas when when you went through these, you know, hardships and it, it, it's more like a reality check. And you know, Reminder. Um, you know, after the, you know, through this, that, you know, the blessings in all this, you know, you, you, you don't go to sleep with the same mind as you did before. Now, right. you know, you, you, you're reading your part, you're reading your surahs, you're reading your ayat of kursi, and, you know, if death comes, you're not, you're not afraid of it. You you're more like, you know, now I'm ready for that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. You know, like, uh, you know, and I'd be proud. I wouldn't, you know, like, some, what's the thing that people fear most in this world? Death. Because, yeah. they, you know, they, they don't know what's going to happen after. When Allah's telling you from A to Z, And you follow the, you know, you, you've you've tried your best to follow everything. That that fear of remove goes from your heart. You know, it eventually right. goes. So when you read the you know, hadiths and stories of the prophet, and you know, you think, how are these guys so fearless? It makes sense how they were so fearless because Allah made them fearless. You know, and a normal man today, a spider comes in the room, he'll be scared. 
You know, that, that, that's the reality today. You know, we live in the world, you know, that everyone, you know, they're hearing news and they're saying, well, America's going to throw a bomb or, you know, Russia might do this. And this is the world we live in. When in reality, this has been happening since our grandfathers were our age, where this would happen and that would happen. Did it happen? It was all there to control you. You know, this is how the shaitan worked. That's you know, right. This the, is the, how dunya, the dunya takes grasp of you. Yeah. yeah. And, and the dunya is worthless. You know, and you realize that. When you go through hardship and, you know, certain things in life, you realize it is all worth it. If tomorrow someone said to me, you know, we'll give you this nice mansion, beachfront, you'll have everything you and wife can enjoy. I'll be like, no, thank you. Because previously I didn't understand. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, we lost it somehow. It, it, that's, that's how inspirational the story was. They just The stream yeah. couldn't take it. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, Alhamdulillah. yeah, but we'll it's definitely place. agreeable. It's definitely agreeable that without Allah, there's there's nothing nothing can happen without Him. That's right. That's right. And that's that's why, like I mentioned earlier, my personal prayer, I say, Oh Allah. I mean, literally, almost every single prayer. Uh, oh Allah, you're my comfort, my peace, my protector, and I cannot make it without you. And yep. you know, when you when you get to a point I mean, where well, that's how you truly feel. You know, obviously, when that, when I'm in my personal prayer and I'm saying that, I'm not just saying it just for the sake of saying it. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that I say it on the show just for the sake of saying it. I'm saying it because I mean it. I mean it. I, I've, I've already been through life trying to do it on my own. And I failed in so many different ways. And yeah. even even at times when I thought I was having success, when I look back, I, was, I think, you know, these achievements that I had, you know, primarily in the music business and so forth, I'm thinking, that means nothing. On the yeah. day of judgment, on the day of judgment, that means nothing. Nothing that I did during that time is going to amount to anything on the day of judgment when it boils down to it. And um, let me bring the brother back on. He's backstage. Uh, there he is. Welcome back, brother. Thank you. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> this brother, I'm just going to take your uh, story. Sorry. That's how beautiful it was. I, I'm just going to leave because it's, it's going to be Fajar now. Okay, uh, brother. It was very nice to meet you guys. Really, mashallah. Thank you, Thank you for brother. Salam alaikum. Brother Reeb, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, and so uh, it, it cut you off right when you were you were right in the middle of some good stuff right there. May Allah bless you. Um, cliffhanger. You left us on a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, so I was saying, you know, um, basically, you know, after going through everything, you know, desires, we all have desires and we all have, you know, um, we always want the next thing and, you know, whatnot. And we think, you know, future and everything. And, you know, I feel like for me personally, for me, it's all gone. You know, it's all, it's more about, you know, like I've read the description of Jannah so many times that this world truly looks boring to me. You know, everything looks boring. It's all it's all pointless. It's just, you know, when's the time going to take and, you know, when's the good stuff going to happen? Because yeah. in this world, you, you you go to the beach, nice sunny day, you know, you're there and, you know, your wife's there and, come on, let's take a picture. And then, oh, it's raining. <laughs> or, 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 or there's too many people on the beach. Or, or there's something always, you know, it's never perfect. How you imagine it, it never comes out to be the same. You know, there's yeah. always something wrong. And, and when you understand that about life, when life teaches you that, and I think you're free. You're free from every problem because, you know, you understand that everything is temporary. If I am temporary, you know, if, if, if I'm, if I'm going to be here for a short while, what value do I hold? You know, how yeah. can I be arrogant? How can I be, you know, I'm something. And the, the biggest problem in the world is what? Me, the word me. Everyone's saying me, 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 me. And where are we? We're, we all have the same problems. We all, you know, going through the same, you know, it's the same life with, with the same questions, the same answers. You know, we're looking for the same things. And where does it fall down to? It falls down to, you know, we're looking for Allah. Everyone's looking for Allah, whether, the, you know, whether they're, they're Muslims or not. We're all in search of Allah. And once we find Allah, everything's, mashallah, beautiful. And, and, and once you, and, and the thing is, you want it to stay that way. You don't want it to ever change. Now, with the, you know, I, I know, you know, there's going to be, you know, sadness that's going to come. There's going to be happiness. But I've understood that now, that it works like that. You know, I've not, I've not, I don't have an image in my mind where it's all perfect because I know this dunya is not like that. You know, mm -hmm. like as kids, we're told fairy tales. Did we believe them fairy tales? Yeah, we did. We, of course we did. As kids, we believed fairy tales. And then we broke it down and said, no, that's not true. Now you, you tell someone a fairy tale. And, you know, we, as adults, we're like, oh, yeah, of course, it's bogus. You know, it, it's all yeah. fairy tales. You know, we use it as an excuse now, you know, to say, you know, this is all rubbish. 
And you know, and, and that's the beauty of uh, Islam. It teaches you, you know, it it, it, go, it goes to that much depth that you have no you have no doubt left. That's right. You, know, you don't have no. You know, you you've entered the right religion, and you know, you know, not at any cost are you going to let go of it now. That's right. Alhamdulillah, brother. If that's the last thing you ever say on this earth, may Allah, may Allah not let that, let that be. But if it was, may Allah bless you and give you the highest levels of jinn. I mean, that's a beautiful I mean, sister, sister Sophia. Yeah. Do you have any closing statements that you'd like to to share before we close out? Um, I'm just gonna say, stay positive, take life as it comes, don't lose faith in Allah, and yeah, follow the truth. And the same it. thing applies to you, sister. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. So this has been a beautiful story, uh, absolutely beautiful, beautiful story. Uh, make sure if you're watching right now or in the future, listen. You get sadaqah as well. If your intention is to allow other people to hear this story and be affected in some kind of positive way, I don't see how anyone could hear this story and not be affected in some beautiful way. You know, it's it doesn't matter what your religion is. If if you hear this story, you it should affect you in some way, in a in a beautiful way. Uh, we went from laughter to tears and fighting back tears and so forth. Um, I do encourage everyone to uh, to watch the sisters original. Let me bring uh, the uh, brother Ari back in. I do encourage everyone to to go to the channel um, and look for the sisters' original uh, reasons to revert story, and watch that. That way, you get a a, a bigger foundation about what this show is about. Um, and that's the, that's the uh, the ad for that particular show. But uh, I encourage you to go watch that and. That would and if the, anyone has any questions, then they can just message me on like Instagram or anything like that, because my YouTube channel has my Instagram link at the bottom. So if they've yeah. got any questions, then feel free to ask. Inshallah. Matter of fact, once again, subscribe to the Sisters channel. It's Sister. I posted it earlier in the chat. I'll find, try to find it again real quick. It's Sister. As a matter of fact, here it is right here. Um, I'm going to post it again. So go to the Sisters channel and support her in her Dawah efforts. And... Um, Thank you. Uh, and I'm posting the link. Alhamdulillah. So um, as far as I'm concerned, this is a this is a sister channel to consider this TV in my, in my mind. So this is a uh, alhamdulillah, this is a sister channel to consider this TV at this point. And uh, so may uh, be sure to subscribe to that channel and show the sister support. Also, once again, um, the also the new other new channel that we are streaming live through is IRCR Media. And it's a relatively new channel, but go there and subscribe there as well. IRCR Media, and um, show them some support. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and share on this channel. And if you'd like to donate to the Dawa Fund and help us to keep keep doing the Dawa and to uh, to to uh, have more water wells built for the sake of Allah, um, for the Day of Judgment in areas of the world where water is scarce and hard to come by. Uh, you can donate to the links and one, but through one of the links that I'm fixing to share. Also, it goes to the Quran Initiative and in purchasing uh, new translations of the Clear Quran uh, for the Dawah and also some uh, other Islamic materials, and also the uh, hygiene for the homeless campaign that we're working on. And uh, so the 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 yeah, so we need your support and help for that, inshallah. And remember, this is blessings for everyone who contributes on the day of judgment. So please, please make sure you hit subscribe, like, and share and share this particular link for this show with, with, with other people, because it's a, it's a great example of how you go through different struggles and so forth, going from a completely different way of life in, in regards to a different religion, be it Hinduism or uh, uh, Christianity or Buddhism or whatever, going, and then accepting Islam uh, based on you know a happenstance, no, it wasn't a happenstance. It was by the will of Allah that these two met each other at this uh, at this coffee shop, at Starbucks. Um, you know, and go so going through that and going through all the struggles and so forth, and uh, and here we are today, Alhamdulillah. Uh, so it's a beautiful story. So please share the links and uh, may Allah bless uh, Sister uh, uh, Sophia and Brother Ari for your story. May protect you in all ways. Um, I mean, give you give you children and so forth, and um, protect you 
and make ease for you in your upcoming tests and trials that we all know we're all going to keep continuing to follow. I mean, uh, to, to be tested and tried in this life. Everything is a test. Truth is made clear from falsehood. Matter of fact, that's one of the name of my next books that I'm writing. Everything is a test. Truth is made clear falsehood. That's talking about stuff just like this that we've been discussing. Um, because it's uh, so so important that we're all reminded that this life is nothing but a test. The law says he did not create gin and men except to, to, to worship him. We're going to be tested along the way. And instead of getting lost in this in this life and the things that this world has to offer, we should keep our focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that everything is a test and truth is made clear from falsehood. And whoever embraces the truth has grabbed hold of a trustworthy handhold that will never break. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us keeps us our grip tight on the, the rope of Allah and that he protects us from the evils and the whisperings of the shaitan. Uh, I do bear witness there's no God other than Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his final servant and seal of all prophets. Please, if you gained anything from this story, uh, the, this beautiful couple, uh, it is the reminder that uh, people out there in the world are struggling in, in worse ways than we are. People are homeless, sleeping on the street right now. Someone is in a car accident right now. Someone is in a, in a hospital losing their loved one. Someone is at a funeral right now. Someone is falling sick to COVID-19 and other illnesses. Listen, whenever we're being tested, keep struggling, keep striving. Be a so soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do soldiers do when they're, when, they're, when they're in a war? They get down in the trench. They duck down so that so they, they don't get hit, right? They get in the trench. And they, they bow their, their heads so that they don't get hit. Well, this is what we do as Muslims, right? We bow our heads so that we don't get hit. And we protect ourselves by the mercy and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we stand back up, we stand back up as soldiers, regardless of our gender. Sister Sophia is super Sophia up there, right there. Super Sophia Islamic, right? So see, she is a soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brother Arib is a soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brother Muhammad is a soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brother Ramzi is a soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Brother Raiz Dar, he's a soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of us are. We should be the true men, the true believers. And, you know, uh, and not just take the, the, the title of a Muslim in vain and, and just, uh, you know, just go through the motions of of, uh, of the religion and maybe do it half-heartedly. We certainly don't want to be of the hypocrites on the day of judgment. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to gather the hypocrites and the believers together alike on the day of judgment. And we don't want to be in those groups. So we should take this gift that we've been given and utilize it each and every moment that we can in doing dawah and sharing our stories and guiding people to truth and feeding the hungry and you know sheltering the people that are homeless and so forth. And um, so that our status is uplifted on the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah, I mean, the truth be made clear from falsehood. So with that being said, I'll go into preaching mode. If I don't shut up and go off the show, I'll start talking about this stuff and won't talk for another three hours. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So once again, everyone on the panel, uh, Sister Sophia and Brother Ari, thank you once again sincerely from the bottom of my heart for coming. And thank being, you for having us here as well. That it's a big, it's a big thing. Thank you. You're doing a great job. Allah uh, It's a great blessing uh, for all of us, um, and I uh, thank you for being courageous enough to come and tell your stories because it's you know these are personal things. You, you, it's you know uh, it's people don't have to open up, but the thing is, we need to open up because there's someone else right now that's in a worse condition than you you've ever been in. Same for me. Yep. There's people going yeah. through far worse things and there's people going through very similar things. So for people that hear that yeah. now and even in the future, we get Sadaqah on the day of judgment for anyone that's that's blessed by it. And, you know, anyone who, who's encouraged to say, you know what, they made it. And how did they make it? They made it by remembering Allah, remembering yeah. our creator. And so they can be inspired by your story and they, you'll be all rewarded on the day of judgment for literally anyone and everyone to, until the day of judgment, until YouTube shuts down or, or something happens that, you know, um, everyone who's affected by it is, is uh, we receive blessings for that. And so do they, as a matter of fact. So we'll leave it at that. I thank you all once again. Sometimes I talk too much, but I do it because uh, this means something to me. And I want to utilize literally every second that I can to tell people about what? about the truth and the beauty of Islam. Alhamdulillah, I mean, may Allah forgive me for any mistakes that we make along the way. And may Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you. May Allah bless the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household and his companions. And may he have mercy on each and every one of us on the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah, I mean.